Microphone on. Microphone on. Seems good. Okay. Let's continue. Um, which in this case involves hooking up power to this thing. Um, unfortunately, we forgot our landfill and nuclear fuel. Fortunately, we've got lots of um, solar panels. Speaking of things we've got lots of, we need to deal with the biters on this continent. Not too difficult now that we've got it scouted. And it's a very narrow um, layout. Um, so let's see. We scouted out up here to see exactly how big this planet is. This is the edge of it. Uh, so pretty damn big. Let's get our construction spiders to start placing solar panels. Um, I think... I'll just figure out where I want to put the cannons. Probably up here. Um, where this sub, uh, substation pylon is already going to touch them all. How many is this? Uh, six. We could go... Seven, eight, nine... And ten. Oh. And I'll grab that uh, media defense ammo that we already brought here. If I can turn off my logistics, that is. Fantastic. Found the rest of them. Shove them in this box. Oh. Uh, shove them in this box. Actually, we'll add a bigger limit to that. And then solar panels can go up here. Um, I think we'll just... Uh, that's actually using the substation. We can do better than that. I haven't actually made a layout for... Uh, for the solar just yet. Let's start with this. And I'll start figuring out a ratio. On Nalvis at least, a ratio of a of one to one isn't that far off. Um optimal. But here we have uh minus twenty-four percent. So we want to have maybe like 20% more whole meat accumulators than solar panels. Which is obviously going to be a few more than this. Two thirty-one to 99. Still not even close. A Veldak. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, what do we have now? 207 to 195. We're getting there. I'm thinking if we do this, it's going to be too many accumulators. But we'll see. I am Sark. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, that is, in theory, way too many accumulators. 
Well, is it way too many, or is it... It's like... double. So yes, that's definitely overdoing it a bit much. Let's move these over here. Get the spiders. Actually, let's check our ratio. 187 to 275. Still a little bit too much, I think. Uh, possibly if we just trim one more like this. That gives us 199 to 227. That's actually pretty close. Okay, let's get our construction spiders in the middle. And also add a pylon right about here. Um, it's actually enough to power... Okay, everything's charging, so it's not actually going to keep up for now. But it's a start. We're going to need some landfill over here. And then... More accumulators and solar panels. How's our military looking? They've already done their job. Let's get you to explore out this way. And immediately find some biters. Fantastic. Are we ever going to find the end of this continent, I wonder? Let's grab a remote with the navsat view. So that we don't have to switch back and forth. Actually, that's enough worms that I want them to do a bit of a zigzag. It's actually slightly concerning. And back over here. Okay. So that's the end of that section. Um, now how much fur how much further does this rabbit hole go? We're going way ahead of the terrain generation or the detailed part of the terrain generation here. But I want to trace out all of the continent, then go from there. Okay, fantastic. So it should be all catching up now. Good. Oh, I just messed up their movement. Let's bring them up here. Down this way. Explore the rest of this continent. And it seems like we'll be able to clear it of biters pretty soon. And then we're only going to be... The only reason we need to clear the rest of the biters on this planet is going to be to save a few UPS. Well, more than a few if they spread everywhere. 
I think. I wonder why the biggest nest is right in the middle of the island here. Okay. Get you to clear that out. And that should do it. Not the smallest of islands, but considering the size of the planet, uh, very, very easy to clear out compared to what it could have been. All right, let's bring our construction spiders back up here, hopefully with some landfill. Uh, they do not have any landfill. They've got some stone. Let's, uh, let's do that over here. Fantastic. And then I didn't actually make a blueprint for this. Let's just copy paste it. Cool. Is that going to use up all of our panels? Not even, I don't think. How's our energy looking for now? Uh, we're actually gaining power, uh, gaining accumulator charge. Fantastic. And the sun hasn't even fully come up yet. Need some cliff explosives over here. I think I may have forgot to bring those. Another classic thing to forget when coming to make another outpost. Um, I, I want to let these charge fully before I put the rest down and see how our power looks, because they use a lot more power while they're charging up than when they're in use. Um, currently 20 megawatts each. I think it's actually 10 megawatts when they're just sitting there, though. They're only half done. How many more solar panels do we have left? Eight. That's not great. The regular ones are just here because they're part of the old... Uh, ...wall design. And probably they should stay that way because it's cheaper to replace these if they get broken. But on the other hand, um, if we stop carrying regular solar panels because it's a different stack, it would be easier to convert those to flat solars. But on the other hand... Um, can we even fit... This is actually a really good fit with the regular solar panels. I guess we'd only have to move a power switch and maybe this light, so that wouldn't be a problem. Also, now that I think of it, I bet... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if pylons have a lot more hit points than... Yeah, big electric poles have 150, substations have 200, substation pylon has 500, and a regular pylon also has 500. So, as much as it would be a headache to have all of the wires reaching everywhere all the time, um, if we're going to pay total attention to detail here. Well, substation pylon here would be no good because it would actually reach too far. Uh, pylon here would be good except wire connections would want to reach everywhere, so forcing it to be just a couple of connections might be a bit more of a nuisance when we copy-paste this. 
Um, it's good enough anyway. Okay, how's our power looking? We're charged. Fantastic. Okay, so we have... Um, it looks like we've barely got enough power. That's not great. So we're gonna... We're gonna be in dire straits if we actually... Place the rest of these nuclear defense... Uh, media defense installations. And three isn't gonna be enough to stop anything. Most likely. Alright. Let's, uh, we've got the signal transmitters and receivers working at least, so we can set up the Atera. Um, we can set up, can I not click on this? There we go. The Atera DC chest. And this one is going to be set to Nervous DC Rail Receiver, I think. Yes, because we'll be sending back... I already made a blueprint of this, didn't I? Uh, yes, so we can update these. Um, we're going to set it to Hormonite Core Fragment. And we're going to target Nalvis. Um, at the rail receiver. That's Vulcanite. This is Holmanite core fragments. There we go. Okay, we'll make sure that's aimed at the middle. Switch it on. And uh, on is automatic refiring. Don't have to think about anything else. All right. So we're going to copy paste this to all of these ones. And we can go ahead and set up uh, cannons from Nalvis aimed at Via Terra. So we've got some blank ones here. Um, except I forgot the part where we want to be able to send uranium as well. So we'll get some construction spiders. I've been meaning to do a redesign of that block. Oh, the construction spiders are so far away. Um, I've been meaning to do a redesign of this block, which is going to use logistic bots, probably. It'll solve the problem of running out of how many items we can put, put in here via belt. Um, also, we'll probably just need, like, one drop-off for the entire place. And we can probably fit, like... I don't know, twice as many of the uh, cannons with signal receivers here. Anyway, let's set this to Via Terra DC chest. We are going to be sending all of this stuff. We just need to add... Um, why is there just one more of these here? Oh, because we're using coal with this one. Okay. So we just need to add uh, uranium. Into the mix. I'll turn this... Uh, Express underground around until we're ready. And I'll add a request to chest here and here. I 
There we go. And we'll need to do a... Hmm. I should be able to just put a passive provider for each type. Wait, that's the wrong... That's the wrong one. Where's this RoboPort that I'm seeing? Oh, there it is. We're already using it for coal here. Okay. We'll bring you over... Here's two clothes. Can we not fit this RoboPort somewhere? We need it to be this far to the right, at least. And it needs to be high up enough to... Oh, we can just put it here, actually. Easy enough. Okay, so we're going to have... Um, filter inserters to pick up each type of uranium, like so. We need to drop off some logistic butts here as well. We actually don't have them. Um, I set this up to supply coal, but I never set up the requester chests for it. Or a requester chest. The other problem is how to put logistic bots into this network um, remotely. We've got 50 over here. I'm very tempted, for now at least, to just make it so that these two share a um, logistic network. Yeah, that'll probably be fine for the short term, actually. Okay, but first we need to get our construction bots over here. Our construction spiders, they are on the way. I don't think I have them carrying uh, cannons, though. For some reason, they've picked up some specific delivery cannon capsules. I really hate those, because there's no... There's no way to automatically put them to use. You can't have an inserter put them into a delivery cannon. But this is an entire stack of copper ore, for example. And they do add up. Okay, but more to the point, we need to have this one request some delivery cannons. I think it was literally just two, wasn't it? And we'll have to get them to stop at the mall on the way there. We'll give the bots time to resupply them a bit. And then bring them back over this way. And then and then we need to request both types of uranium. And uranium. And there should be a train here waiting to unload that by the time they get here. Okay, in the meantime though, let's remember to set up everything else. Uh, so this is going to be a Terra. Right about here. Got in early today. How's it all going? Not too bad. Here's Mike. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're going to have a few extra stacks of stuff 
uh, sent this time, but it's probably going to be fine. Via Terra. Steel goes here, because we only need it for the assembly machine, uh, for the ammo. Switch that on. Stone brick is also going to this chest. Although... Oh, that combinator is set wrong. Also, uh, we should set these inserters to stack size 1. Should have checked. Okay, so these are all the correct resource. This should be stone brick. Greater than zero. And... Sulfuric acid barrel. Greater than zero. those are all set up now. Um, we haven't actually aimed the sulfuric acid yet. The Terra goes here. Uh, low density structures. I think I'll just copy... No, if I copy-paste, it'll eject this stuff. Terra... Right here, please. And two to go. And the last, but definitely not least, is copper plate. Fantastic. So we're now churning out delivery cannon capsules and media defense installation ammo. We'll be churning out um, uranium fuel cells once we get those other cannons placed. We need to handcraft exactly one centrifuge. And yeah, that's all looking pretty good. Okay. Uh, we need to mine some stone because we need like a uh, 6,000 landfill to make one of our nuclear plants. I keep finding myself in this situation, and still I forget to pack landfill. Let's set up a assembly machine. Actually, why don't we do this? I keep saying I should use a auto crafter. And can I upgrade this to a Pylon? Nope. Uh, the wire doesn't really matter though. Oh, that's already powered. Fantastic. Okay. Let's go build this. And we need a recipe combinator. And the first thing I want is... What, what was I about to set up a craft for? Oh, landfill, of course. So 6,000 landfill. 
Um, this thing seems to be broken. Each times negative one. Wait, what? What is this design? We've got a timer. Resets every minute. Oh, this is to remove the stuff. Yeah, this is kind of an old design. Um, I think instead we'll just... Set filters, blacklist, when we're setting requests here. Oh, that should be a filter inserter. Set filters, blacklist. And then... That should be fine. If anything is not equal to zero, I'll put everything. So that's basic memory cell. We've got a pulse generator here. Is that not what this is? Why do we have a pulse generator? I guess that would... Uh... This wasn't connected to anything. I forgot to connect this to the RoboPod, apparently. I must have missed something when I saved this blueprint. Yeah, this is this is weird. Um so we're going to we're going to multiply what's in whoops. Multiply what's in the robo network by negative one. And we're going to have a positive number for stuff that we want to craft. Then we're going to say landfill. 6,000, I think. Actually, we also need to um, uh, I usually find we need to do this part anyway. Get rid of the negatives that come from the logistic network. But also, I was thinking we shouldn't pass through negative numbers to this because it will set recipes based on that. Although apparently not. Anyway, uh, we do have this thing working now. Uh, I saw we had 200 and something stone. But it doesn't seem like... Oh, we already turned it all into landfill. That's why. Yeah, that didn't take very long at all. Okay, then. Uh, now, where are we going to get a whole lot of stone? 7.1 million over there. We don't have anything closer. So I think I'll just put down a little self-running stone mine. Where is it? Over here. And I'll just keep it separate from the main power network. Which 
Actually, that should reach across. That's fine. It's night time at the moment. Um, we can do as much as 603 kilowatts for each of these, and this uses 500 kilowatts. So one to one should be fine. Need a little bit of landfill. Come back when when there's some more stone here. Uh, I've actually run out of solar panels, so never mind that. This is probably close enough. Six hundred three times eight is uh, almost ten miners. So we can do one more. And I guess I could throw down an accumulator. I don't have one. I won't bother. Actually, I'll just give it one regular accumulator. That'll greatly extend the mining day. Come on, before the sun finishes coming up. Oh, I've, ha I've got 50, actually. If I'd realized that... There we go. Okay, how much stone have we got here? Already... A bit? Not going to be a much of a dent in the amount of landfill we need. Actually, maybe it would be better if I put down a roboport. Nah, it's fine. I'll do it. I'll do that part myself. Okay, let's get some more jetpack. What else are we doing in the meantime? We need a centrifuge. For that we need 20 more concrete. I don't know where my concrete went. Um, but we need sand. And water. Let's throw down an offshore pump. Concrete... Uh, we've got stone brick. We can make iron stick. And that just leaves sand. Ah, uh, that's already powered. Cool. Oh, it's putting all the sticks in my logistics trash. Okay. Just get a bit of sand and we'll have our concrete. To do that, we just need some stone. That's not what I meant. How much sand do we need? 10 sand for each concrete, so 200, uh, which is 100 stone. So we need like another 80. 
This should do it. Oh, yep, yeah, that'll do it. Let's take all the stone I can get, as a matter of fact. Inventory is looking a little bit full. Okay. Into the machine with you. And that should be enough. Oh, we've already got 40. Good. So now we can make a... We need 25 small electric motors. I can handcraft 50, so why is it saying... Oh, there we go. Fantastic. Let's get this out of my inventory as well. And yeah, I think we are secure. We'll keep the... Um, Pile drivers aimed at this planet to clear out the biters. But other than that, I'm not going to worry about them. Fantastic. And now we can also deal with our nuclear waste when it comes. Let's check on Nalvis. Fantastic, we've got our... Uh, cannons here. Good morning, part 121 already. Damn, yeah, the time flies. Uh, so we're going to set this one to 235. And this one to 238. Uh, 235. And... 238. I'm surprised we haven't have had a train deliver the uranium yet, actually. Um, that's a bit of a concern. We'll just connect these chests. Um, to the same wire so the train station knows it's here. I remember the start of this, yeah. It's been a while. Oh, we've got... We've got no wooden chests here, and the uranium... Uh, has all been delivered there, it seems. Yeah, we've got not quite enough to deliver a train, uh, to trigger a train delivery here. Also, the balanced loader is broken. Not sure how this happened. Let's get our construction game up here. We can also remove this one. But more to the point, refresh those inserters. And then we need to get some chests here. Let's replace wooden with steel. It's just going to be easier at this point. And they've still got a limit on the chests. Um, up here we do not have a similar problem. 
Fantastic. Um, that said, I don't know why we didn't get uranium. Oh, we set the... No? Should have set the provide stack threshold higher here. That's probably why the station broke. But I don't know why there wasn't a delivery scheduled from here with uranium-238. Um, down to here yet. Request stack threshold, 8,000. Oh, it's 16,000. It's a stack size of 100. That's the problem. So there wasn't actually enough here to trigger a delivery. Um, and there will be over here quite soon. Fantastic. Right, so we should be receiving uranium down here in the not too distant future. Uh, the flow of... 238, uh, 235, sorry, is looking pretty good here. Nice. And we are making nuclear fuel. Beautiful. I seriously doubt we need a beacon for the um, uranium fuel cells. Then again, we're not... Uh, we actually are processing uranium ore at the moment. Wasn't this supposed to be... It's only 84 per second. But we set it up to accept... Four belts. Uh, maybe we could use more speed modules here, but on the other hand, it looks like the deliveries of uranium ore isn't quite keeping up with the machines. Anyway, we've comp I was going to say we've completely saturated our nuclear fuel. Uh, we have, but we've got limits on these chests to ensure this is perfectly balanced. And down here... Uh-oh. Oh, right. Yeah, I used chest limiters to balance this as well. I was worried for a second there... Um, that we don't have combinators. Alright. Is this the logistic network? Yes, fantastic. It's got its bots. So it's going to take a little while before we receive our uh, uranium. But no reason not to work towards um, getting this landfill done as quickly as we can. I'm seriously considering bringing an extra spider just to be a speedy spider on each planet. That's a lot of stone. As much as I can carry, as a matter of fact. Okay, so we're going to be making landfill as fast as our little stack inserter can keep up with. 
unless we direct insert and then we're going to go even faster. We've made only 80 landfill. That's a little bit shy of our target of 6,000. Where else can I get some stone? Let's go trees, rocks, whitelist. So we're not going to waste cliff explosives or something. I think this world is treeless, if I recall correctly, as well. Let's see. Yeah, treeless. Weirdly enough. Okay, so let's just mark all of this. Or deconstruction. And now we just need to fly around a bit. You hate the ocean, so landfill all the things. I don't hate the ocean, it's just that uh, when you make a decent sized nuclear reactor, the throughput of water required is quite high. And because you're disincentivized to have long pipes, um, the more sections of pipe you have between a pump or a water source, um, and where it needs to go, the slower it gets. So, with this design, we've got the offshore pumps directly next to where they need to go. And it also just makes it a much simpler process uh, to build yet another nuclear reactor. Let's catch up. Also, Majagus, don't know if I said. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, we'll grab this and head back. I like the shadows of the delivery cannons starting all the way over here. So we've got our delivery cannon capsules backed up all the way. Fantastic. Uh, we've also got... That's weird. Oh, I didn't update these yet. Okay. Uh, core Fragment Holmanite. And... We're probably going to have some energy problems with this, I imagine. But we are already sending it back. Actually, are we not going to have energy issues? I'm a bit surprised by this. 
Um, we've got 50 megawatts for the media defense installations just sitting there all the time. Uh, we've stopped core fragment mining because our accumulator isn't full. So by extension we've stopped charging up all of the cannons once this gets recharged. Um, but yeah, I'm actually present, uh, pleasantly surprised we're able to power all of this uh, with the solar power that we've got. But we do have more core mining drills that we want to put down. So once we get the nuclear power, we'll have less of a bottleneck, a uh, power bottleneck for core mining. And we can probably... How much have we got here already? 65? Uh, okay. We're actually bottlenecking on the belt here as well. Um, but if we double this... The miners themselves will be a bit slower, individually. So we'll probably get that down to 45 pretty easily. Um, and we'll point this up here, just have an underground belt go up this way. Yeah, that is, that is a lot of Holmanite core fragments already. We're actually going to be able to bottleneck it on the cannons now, once we get more power. I think our Holmanite shortage is going to disappear quite soon. It'll probably make a little bit of a dent in our iron or copper shortages as well. We still don't have any copper in this block, although we can tell from the recipe here that we have been smelting copper uh, recently. I don't know where all this copper wire came from, or batteries. I should probably... Should probably add something to this block. Oh, we did. Why is this... No path to trash pick up. Do you have a path here? Yeah, you do. So the trash trains are too busy. I did set up something to remove stuff from this robot network that's not supposed to be there. Uh, I don't know how we got so much of it here. Like, really don't know how much, how we got so much other stuff in this robot network. Iron plate. Oh, it's because we have more than a million iron plate here. It's so weird to me how much iron we have. Um, while struggling so much with copper. Used to be the other way around. We do have this copper mine working properly. Fantastic. Okay, how much landfill do we have? 179, that's not a whole lot. Um, I kinda... I think I'll get one of our military spiders to be speedy. Where are my legs? Oh, I don't have the solar panels. Well, you've already got some batteries, so let's let's go back and back down here to pick up some stone.
two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. In hindsight, I shouldn't have taken the leader. But it's probably fine. Let's grab ourselves some stone. All full. And I'll get these military spiders to just calm down a minute. There's only a few of them. Actually, why don't you follow a new leader? Give it some other colour. They're not all following this one yet, I don't think. But I can't tell which ones are on which. Okay. Stone goes here. Fantastic. Stand next to the stone storage. Alright. Are we not multiplying by input count? We are not. I think that's going to cause all of our... No, it's not. Multiply results by input count. Let's get all of the logistic bots involved. Okay. One. Two. And three. I doubt we'll have any more need for the military spiders on this planet, but oh, it's good to be prepared. Okay, how quickly are we... Quite quickly. Good. Let's go back here and pick up another lot of stone. And I guess we should check on Nalvis or something. We don't have to check on our military spiders on Nalvis anymore. Let's get the deconstruction gang uh, to start going to work. Finish up dismantling this old thing for starters. Actually, I might just... I think the first thing I'll do here is set it up so that the entire logistic network gets put into the trash pickup.
Where did we put our construction spiders? I'm actually not sure. Oh, that's right. Uranium. Did we get uranium delivered yet? Fantastic. Oh, we need to set this up as well. I think I... Oh, I just didn't aim the cannons yet. Okay, cool. Be yet. Uh, uranium goes here. Uranium goes here. Why have we got... I don't think we need to put uranium into the logistic network, actually. Since that's just going to be direct inserted. Why have we not received any... Oh, right, I turned this around. And we need to add a request. Send the player back to logistics. Uh, so we just need to add uranium and uranium. And that should arrive in a moment. Fantastic. That takes more 238 than I realized. The inserter actually can't quite keep up, but we're not going to need uranium fuel cells um, to be made that quickly overall. Alright, how much landfill have we got so far? Uh, 271, that is abysmal. Um, we've got construction spiders here, why don't we... get them to deconstruct the chests here um, in order to pick up the stone. Also, I'll run um, run some pylons all the way to the stone mine and it won't have to run off of its own solar power. Okay. Now then, we should do some scrap recycling. Big electric pole recycling. I might even consider doing that at some point. Medium pole recycling. Uh, radar recycling? Really? I guess it does get to the point where we don't need radars anymore on a planet. Small wood recycling. Electric pole recycling, substation recycling. 
So everything short of pylons, but also radars. Necessarily need to make stone brick, I don't think. But on the other hand, it came in handy before. Uh, we also need an output for the heavy oil. Actually, can we turn scrap into landfill? Yeah, a hundred scrap becomes one landfill. That's not a whole lot. Yeah, that's not as exciting. As I might otherwise have expected. I forgot to put down the umbrella. We're obviously going to get plenty of warning. Um can probably wait until we've got the nuclear plant up and running for that one. Okay, let's grab some... Well, first of all, let's move all these solar panels and accumulators somewhere a bit more useful. Um, we'll put all of this over here. Move the spiders, please. And this can probably go here. Pick up item on ground. Deconstruct the chests for a sec. Undo. This is quite a bit faster. Oh, they don't have any more mining drills? I guess I need to go over there. Okay. Bring them back. I'll go place some more drills. I remember actually I filled the rocket up pretty heavily. It was almost full, so we didn't really have... 6,000 landfill is 60 inventory slots. It's not trivial. Okay, so I think we've actually done everything. Um, it's just landfill to make the nuclear plant that we're waiting on now. Speaking of which... Carry what I can. Whoops. No, don't put the remotes in there. Oh, it wrecked all the remotes. Okay. 
Luckily, I don't have too many of them, but I need to configure for this planet. Let's get the military as number one. And construction number five. Grab some stone. Oh, personal logistics, there we go. Three hundred and eighty-five. We're like ten percent, less than ten percent of the way there. Uh, why don't we add some more requested chests and staff inserters? So we can at least go through the stone quickly when we bring it back here. Come to think of it, I should put speed modules in those miners, now that we've got the whole power network connected. How's our Holmanite production lately? Hard to say. I thought there would be a pretty significant difference. Um, but I guess not. What about Holmanite core fragments? Well, there's a noticeable increase. Although it's very spiky so far. Yeah, we really need to get the power up and running to get this thing really going. Uh, let's give you all some speed modules. Actually, I only have enough for one each. Or two for a lot of them. I'm still not sure why I have some speed module tier ones. Well, that makes them all... Uh, actually, the exact same speed. Weirdly enough. Okay. Oh, I should probably set up... Where do we even get oil here? Uh... All the way down here? Seriously? There's crude oil here... Yeah, um, I always forget to set this up early, because it takes a while to fuel the rocket. But... I think we'll just set up some pump jacks here and then pipe it all the way up, perhaps. Did we bring rail, actually? We did not. We're not going to need much of a throughput of crude oil 
in general. Um, because we're not going to be consistently launching rockets from here. It's just for player transport. So I'll put some pump jacks here. And... Sure. Add a pump here. Actually, how fast is this even going to be? I've run out of speed modules. Oh, the construction spiders probably have some speed modules. Now that I think about it. Or not? Let's find out. Uh, minor speed module. Go. They had a few. Okay. Let's bump this down a little bit, until we've got a few spares. I think we can actually only do two each, if we want to have any left over. Deconstruct, steel chest, and go. And what's the inventory? Pretty full. You can stop there, I guess. Okay, I'll bring the construction spiders up here so we can get some uh, speed modules in pump jacks. Fantastic. And once they've done that, actually, I'll lay out the pipe first since they want to build it. Should probably put some more pumps in here somewhere. Uh, how about here? Figures. Where are we trying to pump this to? Uh, it depends where we want to put the cargo rocket. I think I want to keep the cargo rocket in the robot network over here. Where is our cargo rocket? Here we go. Maybe... Figure out where I want the umbrella first. Here seems good. And cargo rocket we can put about here. Quest chest. That doesn't work. Uh, filter inserter. Actually, I'll put it over here so the wire isn't going to travel across the whole thing. Do we not have any filters? Let's go over there. Okay, so now that we know where the 
cargo rocket silo is going to go. Uh, let's run some pipe back this way. And this way. We could probably use another pump somewhere. Throw down a pylon. Okay. Now we can get our construction spiders to walk back. Alright, we got our filter inserter, set filters blacklist, constant combinator goes here. Uh, talk to the cargo rocket silo. We want... I don't need to put a signal for this. Uh, but just to illustrate it, if we have no signal for space capsule, Uh, where is our space capsule? Um... No, really. Where's our space capsule? We seem to be missing a critical component uh, for our ride home. Capsule. Where did we land? It was like here, wasn't it? Hereabouts? Like, actually, exactly where I built these chests? Is it possible to lose the space capsule? Uh, let's deconstruct item on... Oh, found it somewhere. Where, where is it? There it is. It's just sitting there on the ground. Okay. Pick up the space capsule, please. And that's going to be brought over here, I think. Uh, eventually? It is in the logistic trash. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll just grab it for now. Space capsule is being brought over here. Um, let's turn this constant combinator off just to illustrate it. We're going to set filters blacklist. So as soon as there's any space capsules in this, um, it's going to receive that signal to set that filter. Therefore, we have this one set to zero. As for cargo rocket sections, uh, if we want 100, we need to set this to negative 99. So it'll put 99 extra cargo rocket sections in here. But first we need to unpack them. Yeah, we did bring packed cargo rocket sections. Good. Unpack. Uh, doesn't take a higher priority than landfill. So let's turn off the landfill for now.
Alright, let's bring our spiders closer to those stone chests. Insider actually can't keep up with that. Maybe I should have the autocrafter under the wide area beacon as well. Then again, I'm pretty sure it's going to be resources uh, that bottlenecks this anyway. Also, I kind of forgot to not just pump brood oil directly into our cargo rocket silo. Luckily, we've got room here to fix it. Uh, so let's grab our usual from which planet? The barrel core fragment planet, I think. We just need like one of these. Hey, Noxyway Gaming. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I'll just line this up so that the output pipe is going to go straight to our rocket. And crude oil is going nowhere actually, because we put this too close. Let's just move this a bit. And offshore pump. Uh, I guess crude oil has to go like this. Did we bring any regular beacons? Apparently not. I don't think we're going to need them though. Um, we're not yeah, this is super overkill, um, because we're not going to be consistently launching rockets from here. Okay. Add a pylon substation. And we'll go power this thing up over here. Can we reach? Not quite. Okay. Get in the giant robot. And that will just about be our rocket fuel. Still going through that scrap. It's not a trivial amount. Alright, we're ready to launch except for fuel. And 
Fantastic. Back to the mall. Maybe it would be better if I had set up a cargo landing pad to receive um, landfill. We'll get there soon anyway. Why is this not powered? Still missing a pylon. Fantastic. And away goes the crude oil. How much are we getting? 152 per second is a bit more than I expected. Uh, we actually can't consume that much. Although, first we need to make sure the pipe actually gets there. to our build. How much landfill do we have now? Uh, I don't see... Oh, there's 17 in the logistic network. That uh, doesn't seem very good. And fill until we have six thousand. Still, the inserters can't keep up. That's four stack inserters. I guess that makes sense. They're inserting forty eight every swing, and the recipe takes about that long to finish. How much stone do we have here? 3.3k. That's only 66 landfill. Is crude oil still not connected? We need a pump, and I think we need a pump over here somewhere as well. Oh, that's not actually powered. Okay, that should sort it out. Not sure why I'm even bothering with those pumps, to be honest. Uh... Considering the rate that this is going to consume crude oil. Fantastic. Okay. Right then, that should be... Uh, liquid rocket fuel. Fantastic. Alright, we finally have a way to refuel our rocket. And I don't think there's any need for me to stay here as soon as it's launchable. A 
leave the construction spiders here. But I don't think we need to leave the military spiders behind. We overfilled at least one of the spiders. Yes, indeed. If we're going to give these guys minimum attention, I guess the way would be the way to go would be to keep going until all the bots stop. Uh, if we want to do as much as possible in one trip. Have we not made any liquid rocket fuel? We definitely have. Oh, here we go. 0 0.68 thousand. Cool. And we could probably start um, laying out our foundation for uh, for the nuclear plant now. Do fishes block the building? No, but when you put the landfill down, the fish get deleted anyway. So I'm just rescuing the fish from being wasted. Oh, all of our spiders have 100 landfill too now, so we've actually got a bit more than it looks like. Let's bring them down this way. And grab our current nuclear plant. As long as the robo networks connect, it's fine, but we'll put this close in any case. Oh, and a lot of this is going to get auto-built because of the robo-network already. So that'll be a good hands-off way to do things. If we just had a stone mine that wasn't kilometers away, we could fully automate this uh, quite easily until we've got until we've got all of the landfill in place. How many roboports did we bring? That might actually be. I mean, with 50 logistic bots, they're really, really going to struggle with that distance, though. Hmm. I'm feeling like I should bring trains as a standard thing for this. Especially crude oil. Well, it, we're not going to need the throughput for, for oil because we're using cannons. Well, that is really going to take a while um, before we're ready to launch back home. Is that already full?
Uh, let me use the trunk as well. That'll help. And I'll set this thing to zero stone. Perfect. Shot Shadow Plus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do the reverse and put the landfill machine at the stone mine. That would make a lot of sense, actually. Um, yeah, that's what I did last time. I was almost... Oh, we've run out of power in this little spider. Rip. Um, I was going to do that before, but I guess I just didn't appreciate the scale of how how much it's going to take. Uh, it's going to take 300,000 stone to get the landfill that we need here. So now that we have some power here, um, why don't we do that? And I need to replace all this with belts. That's going to be a problem at this point. Maybe I should just add some inserters to empty all this. Make an, another bot network. Uh, then I couldn't get the bots to take it all up here automatically. Also, yeah, I was considering that earlier, but if it was in its own little network of power. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Okay. Do a passive provider chest. And we could just put like one logistic bot here. Where are my robo ports? Oh. We could put one logistic bot here. Uh or just a few, and have the spiders stand here to pick up landfill. I need them to request more landfill, but that's fine. all these chests. Yeah, that's going to be more than a bit more effective. Don't forget the Spidertron inventory. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to go pick up some logistic bots now. How many spiders do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. I think we'll just have them all ask for a thousand landfill. And 
and if we stand them next to this thing, they'll eventually have enough to just finish this. We're at like 2% liquid rocket fuel. I already put these roboports as far apart as possible. Um, so I can't exactly make it so the roboport here is closer to uh, closer to the edge so we can build it sooner. But I can definitely manually put some landfill where the roboport goes. About here, I think. Very carefully. It's easier to see on the map where this actually fits. Fantastic, that's our RoboPort. Um, so. Let's make sure we've got a pylon powering that up. So now any landfill that gets delivered to this Robo Network is going to build most of this. Fantastic. Look at how much faster the bots are if you get closer. I need to steal some logistic bots. And plastic. A little bit more, please. And let's bring them back down here. Oh. I didn't mean to place the umbrella yet. It looks like we're still positive on power, but we're probably not... Um, we're probably not... mining as much because of that power drain. That's the end of our scrap. Fantastic. A poor spider. Let's give you a portable RTG. We've got 620 plus 120. That should be enough. Uh, landfill is up to 200. Beautiful. We are still bottlenecked on... Ooh. Oh, we're still nowhere near emptying most of these chests. Wow. Um, that goes there. I might get the spiders to help moving these chests. All of it, actually.
Okay. Now, do we need more inserters? Probably, especially if I use a speed module. This is giving us 1.2 per second. That's not enough. Do the spiders have any speed modules? At all? Yes. Now, are we bottlenecked on inserters? Absolutely. Um, we don't actually need a splitter or anything. But I guess it'll be fine. How about now? Still bottlenecking on inserters. Actually, I think the belts are never getting backed up. So we're bottlenecked on the actual stone now. Okay. That's fine. Although, I can't believe it's escalated to this point, but a wide area beacon would be nice. Yeah, so that's definitely... Gonna bottleneck on the inserters. I think we're gonna go full full stack inserter here. Um, no, there isn't actually a place we can put the long arm if we do that. Is there not? Yeah, I don't think so. All right. That's not going to do our power any favours either, but we can just remove it when we finally have enough landfill. We're already up to 400, I should have done this to begin with. Liquid rocket fuel is still taking its sweet time. Um, maybe we should beacon this as well. How did I run out of all of these speed modules? I think I didn't pack any, that's why. Oh, that's a lot of speed modules over there. Let's borrow them. In fact, we can just cut and paste this, and the bots will work it out. Why was putting the nuclear reactor plant on land not an option? Water pump speed? Uh, basically. I mean, we could. There's plenty of water here. It's just a bit of a pain to set up with the pipes and stuff. Uh, but then I totally underestimate how much landfill, uh, how, what it takes to get 6,000 landfill until I find myself scaling up the production 
bit by bit by bit until we're finally going at a respectable pace to get it done. This thing is already done almost 10% uh, of... It's, it's done like 8% and then some of what the whole project would have taken. And it looks like the Logibots are keeping up. Although we can make things even easier on them. By doing that. Um, should I dismantle... Well, not dismantle. Uh, I think I'll take the military spiders back with me. We can just let the construction spiders have rockets. I'll leave the speedy spider here, actually. Maybe with... Uh... Slightly fewer legs and some lasers. More shields. Just in case. It's taking a while to empty. Wait, what? There we go. Alright. Why is it trying to make green wire? There's one green wire in the robot network? And that's spitting out a negative of green wire here. Okay, we need another one of these. Also, let me just make sure that green wire disappears. There we go. So we're only going to send through positive signals. Alright, I think I'll park myself in the rocket. Um, how's our rocket fuel going? We never built that wide area beacon down here. I would have thought the robots would have done that by now. So that should be able to consume all of the crude oil. 204 versus 150. It should be enough to keep this thing going more or less full speed. How much rocket fuel do we need? 125k. Uh, and this is doing 1.4k per minute. It's going to take more than an hour. Are we accumulating solid rocket fuel? Yeah, let's get the beacon involved. I've run out of uh, cliff explosives. Oh, my rope port wasn't on. There you go. Alright, that'll make it go slightly faster. Alright.
I think I might just set this to auto launch. Actually, no, then it's going to launch again and again and again. Um, so I'll just wait here. Meanwhile, in Nalvis orbit, uh, we have... It doesn't say what's in the requester chests, does it? Ooh, 371 speed module sixes. That's not too bad. Uh, where's our zero productivities? And uh, where is it? Uh, 206 efficiency module sixes. So the only problem here is we're not getting any broad biological catalog, which is a little bit surprising because uh, we've definitely been making some. We got all that research done. Biomechanical resistance data. Biochemical. Biochemical data. Biochemical resistance. What's going on here? Uh, the pumps are backwards. That's what's going on here. And there's actually quite a bit of biomechanical resistance data. Well, let's turn these ones around as well. Fantastic. And you are on your way to... Uh, must be here. That's going to give us another 8,000 broad biological catalogs. I mean, uh, broad... Bio yeah, broad biological catalog. Cool. I'm thinking I should probably just have four chests. Oh, wow. Never mind. Seeing bio catalog all backed up is, uh... Warms the cockles of my heart. Okay. What's next? We were working on Astro. Uh, our next step was going to be multispectral astrometric analysis. For that, we need astrometric facilities. For that, we need our space construction spiders to walk over here, please. And while they're at it, let's get them to build this rail. Get the uh, scaffolding gang back to the mall. Get the speedy spider back to the mold as well, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Time for a landfill rocket, I guess? Yeah, it often gets to the point where I think I should have just sent a rocket with landfill. Um... I might, in fact, set up one of these rockets to just be manual launch and supplied with everything it takes to build a couple of nuclear reactors, including the landfill, and some fuel to go with it as well. Um, what was I doing a second ago? Space. Oh, that's right, I wanted to check on this. We've got 1175 landfill that's been made here. 
We've also had some other landfill, so let's see how much our construction spiders can help over here now. Let's rescue the fishies. I definitely want to have all of the fishies brought back with me. Anything else? Uh, adaptive armor Mark IV should probably not be left here. Seems a little bit wasteful. Okay. So we need to figure out a better layout for the maximum number of astrometric facilities with a beacon. Well, with multiple beacons in a block here. Oh, this is the one that we might have to use... We might want to use sushi for. Because... It's... Blank data cards plus five other cards. So it's ten items in ten seconds. That's before we speed things up. Um... We're looking at 3.4 per second uh, total output, 1.7 per second blank data cards, and this probably adds up to exactly that. Put the decimal in the wrong place. So we only need to pick up 3.4 items per second. Um, how much? Oh, we need to deal with fluid as well this time. give us. Also, there's no... there's no scrap output, just fluid. Nice and easy. So here we would actually need more than a belt of input. I don't think sushi is going to be the way to go here. Um... This is five and a half per second for each of these inputs. Here we're getting 6.8 per second each. I think that's the slowest one we've got as well. Yes. So we should probably... We should probably ratio the whole thing for like 6.8 per second for each input, if we can. How many machines like this would that take? Oh, that's exactly 6.8 per second. 20 machines. And this is 6.8. Okay. Uh, so, 10 on each side. How should I do this? We can definitely move this a bit further apart. Sushi, sushi, sushi. Uh, yep. 
I think that's where we're going with this. 3.4 per second, uh, 17, 34 items per second on each side here. Which is something that we can handle with sushi, I think. Uh, let's do some space pipe. the individual input and output 3.4 per second in 3.4 per second out so that's too much for a long arm inserter right even ignoring that it's going to be extra slow because of the belt Uh, yeah, even with direct insertion, a log arm is slightly too slow, so I think we're going to do it this way, so we can do one input belt, one output belt, I mean, yeah, one inserter on each of them. Uh, I doubt we'll need a anything more than a fast inserter, even with having to take from belts. It says with direct insertion we would only need half an inserter, so that's probably fine. Um, I guess the sushi IO, well, sushi input rather, would look like this. that down this way and this way why don't I just um, do five on each side actually shift the way these line up. That doesn't reach through, does it? No, not with the pipe. I uh, wouldn't even want it to, anyway. Turn the belt around. And... This will go here. this one. Seems good. Okay, so output belt is going to look like 
this. Is that kind of tacky looking? This would be extra tacky. I just want to double check this again. Uh, this would give us... 9 point... Oh. Yeah, this would consume... 6.8 per second. We could probably fit this four times in the entire block. Um, I wouldn't mind trying to lay things out so that we can quadruple this in the one block later if we want to. Undead Hunter, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. At the bottom, make it underground, one belt underground again. Looks nicer. Yeah, we can do that. You're not wrong. Okay. So... Let's check the inputs again. 17 per second times 2, 34. So we need like one belt for each of these. Since we have so many inputs, well, six isn't that many. If we belt it, we can do... If they share belts, controlling the amount on the sushi belt is a problem. Hmm. Should we try to use the something like this. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We need half of it to be blank data cards, though. So if we used a 50% and used both sides of the belt, those could be blank data cards. And then we need... Um... 10% for each other resource. How do we get to 10%? How do we get to 10%? Hello, Niemand. Good. Uh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Dev. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. New ish to the stream, what's the overall goal with your playthrough? Have you done all the tech yet? Wondering if I need to scale up massively for my own SE playthrough. Uh, the goal is basically just to finish it, but after that, it, assuming we have any UPS left, um, we're probably going to crank the throughput and see how far we can go with infinite science. So the way the 50% works is the priority input comes from what's already on the sushi belt. 50% um, goes onto the sushi belt, 50% goes back this way. Very straightforward, and you can make it 25% easily by just using half a belt. Although when you're combining with others, it's going to be a specific half of the belt you have to bear in mind. 25%. Uh, uh, it looks like we're just doing the same thing, but with one more splitter. That's pretty easy to understand. 75% is not what I'm looking for. 33%. 
33% is just these three, apparently. Oh, we must have deleted some of this. Okay. Yeah, I think I have that blueprint somewhere. Um... Sushi. Yeah, here it is. So this one is going for 50% for each input, but it's using um, just half a belt every time, and a different half for red, a different half for green. So 25%. Uh, is that right? Fifty percent, fifty percent. Yeah, so twenty-five percent, and half of that is uh, twelve point five percent, one eighth. And we've got seven types of science usually. I guess with the throughput that we need. Um, hmm. Considering we only need to use 34 out of the 45 items per second on the belt, if we limit each of these to 1 8th, except the blank data card, um, that's 5 eighths. Uh, if we limit blank data card to, that's going to overfill it. Hmm. Then again, I guess you're already stressing the limits of belt speed. I'd recommend going with an inserter counter feed to help future-proof it. Yeah, I've done, uh, I've done counting systems for sushi before, and I've got a few combi uh, combinatorless, uh, that it uses circuit wire, but it doesn't use a combinator, uh, ways to control what we put on the sushi belt. I just wanted to try something different here. Um, the question is how we get one-eighth by using splitters. I don't know that we can, or at least not without some fancy splitter tricks that I, like balancer tricks that I don't know very well. I'd say just account for the T3 version of that recipe. Uh, well, we can't see it yet, so I can't really account for it. If I set five of these to one eighth, um, that leaves three eighths remaining. Is three eighths of the belt? Um, point three eight times forty five. 16.88 items per second. That's just barely short. If we go for the remaining three eighths being blank data card. Um. If we go one-tenth, if we can, of the belt, that's going to be more than enough for each of these. And then we can obviously do half for the blank data cards. Link? Are oh, you looking for a permit? Uh, I think the bot is 
broken still, actually. I need to have... I, I need to look into that. Oh, the bot's not going to stop you from linking, so there you go. Factorio.school All splitter balancer blueprints. Indeed. Um, anything useful here? I'm thinking. How can we split down to one-tenth with this sort of thing? We can easily go 50% and 50% of 50% and so on. Um... So this is 50%, 25%, and it's 1 eighth if we use just half of that. I think we need to use the awkward, um, like, two to three balances, except for example. So if, you, if we get a third of a half, for example, um, that gives us a sixth. How many items have we got? We've got six items, but we actually need to split it by one-tenth instead. I think we just have to think in terms of common denominators. So can we go like 1 to 5? How big is that? That's bigger than I want to use. If we go for 1 eighth... Uh, for the other five inputs each. Oh, I think I checked this already. If we use up the other three eighths, it's just barely short. Mm. I think we're just going to use like a typical loading system for the sushi belt. Now the question is, do I want to do a, um, a bot drop-off? Might be the best way to go. Since we've got so many different types of items here. Yeah, I can't think of a good way to have a layout with um, inserters and belts. Also, given the total throughput that we're going to have for inputs, 34 per second, um, well, 68 per second if we use all of this. I'm thinking at least until we scale it up uh, bot insertion is going to be pretty effective. As long as we keep it super short range they can probably go really really fast actually. Let's start from the middle here, and bring this through here. Actually, I should calculate exactly how many... 
Let's say we just have two train loads of each thing. Thank you for the follow, Soul Down. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, a train load is 160 stacks times eight. Uh, sorry, no, times six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So 960 stacks divided by 48 is 20 chests. So I think we'll try to keep all of those nice and close together. How many is this? 34, more than enough. And we'll have some request chests. We may as well use this part uh, for the inputs. Although, depending on how we do this... If it's going to be half and half... Uh, half of it's going to be blank data cards, then I think we put... Like data cards on one side and everything else on the other. And we're just going. Simplest solution that might work, although it might be a bit too slow, is if we just read all of these bits of belt and say read belt contents hold. Uh, blank data card, for example. Has to equal zero. Actually, if we're going to use just one side of the belt for blank data cards, we don't need to limit it at all. So that part just got a lot easier. And I think... This is probably good enough. We can always just shorten or lengthen the number of pieces of belt that we're checking. Um, for each type. Okay. So I think we'll keep this full. And this one. Visible. Whoops. Infrared. Add one blank data card every time one gets picked up. Uh, we don't need to with blank data cards because it's exactly 50% of... Uh, it's exactly 50% of everything we're putting in here, so we're just going to use half a belt for it. We can do that with uh, the other cards if we want to. But I've done that before, and the thing with... I mean, I can easily do it again. Um, I wanted to hopefully come up with something a bit different this time. But the other thing is with accounting system, if for some reason you take something off the belt, uh, like accidentally, uh, it means the count is now incorrect, which is 
got the most helpful. Same thing over here, but we'll flip it. The short range of the uh, RoboPort, uh, of the logistic bot trips here, should mean that the bots have no trouble whatsoever keeping up. Um, that's the theory, at least. What's our overall rate of consumption? Um, 34 times 2, 68 items per second. Yeah, I think the bots can really easily keep up with that, with those short distances, with 50 of them. Um, however, if I want to double this, for example, I don't think we can get it over here without these logistic networks colliding. Uh, if I want to double that... Maybe we can use belt inputs. I'll cut this just in case. The thing is we need to get five inputs from each cargo wagon. Either that or... We can do... Well, actually, if we're not combining the belts... Let's think about this for a second. So we're going to do... Each type of data card... Where are they? Frame data. Visible. Infrared. EV. Microwave. And X-ray. And we could maybe even do blank data cards on the end there as well. Uh, the only trouble is we need to bring each of these types together to merge and then split them to where they need to go. That might be a problem. Yeah, I think that's going to be a bit much. This would have to go here. So we're going to need like two tiles going down uh, for each different resource, I think. We could do that. As long as we don't mind taking up enough uh, taking up enough space in this block that we can only double this. Just double check again. It's less than one belt of blank data cards. Oh, also, each of these are only going to use half a belt. Which is fine for these other inputs. But for blank data cards, I think 
we'll just have those on the opposite side. Save some space as well. this go? Something's off. Wait a sec. If we need only 6.8 items per second for each of these, we don't need to use splitters like this at all. Okay. So I think for this one, we just go like that, and then Might still have to take up a bit more space than I had in mind. Unfortunately, the inserters put things on exactly the wrong side if I want to do it like this. Um, this thing's going to output... Did I just create green wire? I did. Okay. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I kind of did, but I kind of didn't. But what this actually tells me is we could we could do it if we're going the other way. Um, we'll just do this one like so. Wait, what? Oh, that's right. So number one... Just direct inserts like that. We could use a long arm for the second one, but I feel like that would look a little bit tacky after we have to do this for the other ones. I think this is how we go about it. Last but not least, fantastic. And then we just put these things in chests. These won't have to be undergrounds this time. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. So, how do we... I think we can fit... I don't know if we can fit this the way I would want to. I seriously doubt it. We could share belts a bit. Use filter inserters. So... Like that. And like that. How have we not got six here? It needs to be these two. And then these two. Oh, we've we've got five items. 
Okay. So how is this going to look? I have one, two, three, four, and five. And we'll use a splitter. So we can send things across. On the other hand, that's going to have some items stuck on the end of the belts forever. But... It's better than having a million belts, I think. So then, another splitter like this. And then, Definitely move that up a tile. But I don't think a tile is enough that we could quadruple this if we want to. I think we'll just stick with this, it's fine. Okay. Of course, we need to. That's a problem. It's fine. I might just move this over a bit. And we'll read bits of belt. Well, that one's a bit of an exception, but whatever. Uh, read belt contents whole. Connect to the inserters as well. And we're just going to say a specific type of data card, oh, read hand contents hold specific type of data card equals zero. And I probably should have just finished this one and copied them. Uh, so this is visible. This is infrared. EV. Uh, microwave. And X-ray, visible, infrared, EV, microwave, X-ray, copy those across. So that's our combinatorless balanced unloader for each resource. We'll put some filter inserters here neat ideas thank you um and we'll start with 
Well, I need to use the exact same settings down here, actually. We're just reading the a bit of belt, and we're only putting more visible observation data on there if we don't find any. Uh, so, visible... Um, infrared... UV... Microwave... And X-ray gets its own chest. I mean, gets a full belt. Actually, just for the consistency of the look, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put, um, filter inserter here. Otherwise it's gonna look like something's out of place. Okay. And then, I'll just use five chests for the blank data cards. Otherwise, it's going to look really wonky next to these ones. Um, we do need to use both sides of the belt. But... Wait, what? What? One, two, three, four, five... Uh, something is not right here. <laughs> We're not supposed to be unloading from the locomotive at the back. Okay. So this one can go here. These two... Them together. Wait, what? That's not right. And now we're missing scaffolding. Now uh, the first two need to come here, actually. So I'll do a underground something like this. And these two need to come together as well. That's gonna be a little tricky. I think I might just change the shape of this part. Um, we'll do this middle one first. That goes there. And this goes here. That should be fine. Okay. We could probably just squeeze our blank data cards through this way, actually. It's actually a really good fit. Okay, that's almost too good a fit. How many are we doing on this side? 17. Uh, I don't think we can keep up with that with one stack inserter. So 
So where are we going to do this? Oh, right. We just don't need a chest here. Not like that. I think it's going to look really tacky if we go down the middle here, actually. Let's bring this down here. And... We're simply going to belt it onto the top half. And we can fit that over there quite easily. some undergrounds to tidy this up a bit. It's pretty close. Could maybe move this over a tile. better. Okay, so once again, we're just going to use a simple balance unload with no combinator. Read the belt in the middle is necessary to keep them all swinging together. Otherwise, um, the last one to swing back ready to pick up is going to be behind the rest of them. Everything equals zero. Read and contents hold. Read belt contents hold. Cool. I think that's it, except for fluids, obviously. Um, hmm. Well, we're not going to be doubling this because I didn't leave room for a thermo fluid drop off. On the other hand, we've got lots of space down the bottom. We could probably probably do fluid input and output as well as the solid pickup. So where should we do each of those? Uh, standard pickup. Let's do a... Requester on this side, active pickup on this side. Output of desired product is here. And this will be our 25 degree thermo fluid. fluid. T 
45 degrees, so a fluid and request. It was negative 10, wasn't it? Wait, was it negative 10? Uh, negative 100, but not definitely not negative 275. Minus 100. Request on. Dynamo fluid. Negative 100. Switch on. Fantastic. And I think we could probably copy paste this over this side as well if we want. Although, given the nature of the belts having to face to the left uh, for this particular build, um, it's not going to line up exactly the same. We could probably move this part over a bit. But, uh, yeah. Which one do we want to be input or output? Doesn't matter. Let's do our... What's the total output from this? 68 per second. That's more than I thought. So, let's bring our... Belts together here. That'll use both sides. And same thing on this side. Although that one I'm thinking will actually do this again. So that this can just come from the left. Okay. That just leaves fluids. What is this bot doing? Never mind. Um, kind of made it a little tricky to get the negative two seven, ne negative a hundred in here. I could always move the belt slightly. Or we could run that pipe this way. Is there not? 18, 19, 20. I think we have to use... Oh, a 15 and a 5. That's fine. Five degrees out. Nine, ten, eleven. That's unfortunate. I think we'll do it like that. And 
think we'll run our pipes over here as well. Alright, I think that's basically it. It's going to go there. And it's going to be astrometric data provider. And now we probably just have to set up the input station. Blank data card. One of these, one of these, one of these, one of these. And one of these. And they all stack to the same amount. But we actually need five times as many blank data cards. This layout actually works out exactly right with the proportions of how much we need. Um, we'll go for 40,000 blank cards and just over 8,000 of everything else to keep it from running out. Visible, infrared, UV, microwave, x-ray. And we can turn that on now. Next, we need to connect these chests to LTN so that it knows how much is here. And I'll just double check fluid is not going to be an issue, which I should have done ages ago. But yes, fluid is not going to be an issue. Alright, so the train should be on its way. Our rocket is fueled. Fantastic. Oh, and our landfill. We've probably got enough of that now. Uh, to finish what we're doing here. We left some poor defenseless uh, logistic robot hovering here with no storage. How much landfill do we have? Almost a chest. 4.1k. That might be enough to finish it. We'll soon find out. And in the meantime, we've actually filled the chest with uranium fuel cells. Beautiful. Oh, and I don't think I will go home. Uh, now that we're able to build this nuclear plant quite soon, uh, it'll be slightly easier to set up what I'm going to do here uh, with core mining, I think. I don't have to do it remotely. Um, we need this wire to connect, though. Maybe if we do it like this. Set these two to just nothing. That should be fine. I didn't mean to set the conditions on all of those belts. So 
So this is set to accumulator has to be full. And how much core mining are we looking at here? 92 per second. Wait. Why is it... Oh, that's the net rate. Yeah, 92 per second. So we still need a few more core miners. Actually, no, that's not gonna help. Um... We're actually going to bottleneck on delivery cannons. What's this? 80... Oh, I forgot. 90 per second is actually... Um, is actually a full belt. So... Yeah, 92 per second is pretty much as good as it gets. Although, according to this... Oh, right. Yeah, no, I forgot. It's it's 80 per second that the delivery cannons are going to be able to keep up with. And the delivery cannons are going to be very, very slightly bottlenecked on delivery cannon capsules. Wait, I thought... Oh, we got rid of the, um, we moved to the beacon, that's why. This goes here. Okay. So yeah, when, when net negative 0 0.2 delivery cannon capsules per second, and this would bottleneck at 80 four fragments per second. So uh, if we can drop this to 80 or just under it, that's actually literally perfect. Um, that's going to be by far as energy efficient as we can be here. I think 80 core fragments per second is going to be quite good for our needs for the far f going far into the future. Um, but I didn't think I would have to consider scaling this up more than eight delivery cannons so quickly. Uh, but yeah, that'll be good. I think I am ready to go back to Nalvis now. But I have nothing pressing to do on Nalvis in particular. Um, I think I'll stay here until I've confirmed that... Oh, we should definitely put an umbrella up as well. We should have the power for that now. I'm not too worried about slightly slowing the Holmanite until um, seems like we're losing power uh, I was going to say I'm not too concerned about slightly slowing the Holmanite until we get the nuclear plant but I guess I'll leave it at that I'll start putting my stuff in here, except for the spiders, our armor stuff, we just want to leave everything that might be useful. Not the space manufacturing. Wide area beacon, sure. Not the life support.
Okay. That should be fine. Oh. And I think we're finished. What? Oh, okay. I was going to say, why is there that extra little bump? That's where the substation goes. Um... Let's put down our nuclear reactor. And that should sort itself out. Fantastic. Do we have enough offshore pumps? Uh, we should do. I put them into the logistic chests. What about steam turbines? Should be more than enough. Alright, let's check in on the orbital base. We've got one, two, three different types of card on the sushi belt. Should probably drop the stack size on these to one. And we may or may not need to extend the part of the belt where we're reading from. Actually, can a fast inserter keep up with 3.4 per second if its stack size is 1? Um, let's see. Rotation speed 864 per second. I think that's 2.4 swings. Yeah. So that would be 2.4 items per second that we're putting on the belt. So it needs to be at least a stack size of 2. Um, and that's assuming that putting stuff on the belt is instantaneous. I think we'll just not override the stack size. Although, if it were to be... Okay, never mind. We'll just consider that if it gets stuck. I am seeing these inserters stopped pretty much all the time. And there seems to be plenty of room on the belt for other types. So that's probably fine. Okay, so what's going on with visible and UV observation data? Nothing. I think we've got plenty of each. 19,000 of... Yeah. Uh, it's so hard to tell which is which. The yellowish one here is infrared. So we've got 19,000 of each of those. So why isn't it being delivered? Because we're doing blank data cards now. Oh, I should have set the train limit here a bit higher. It, I think it's going to be fine once it catches up. Um... We only need 64 items per second in total. Okay. 
And there's our blank data cards on the other side of the belt. Uh, something appears to be wrong with items on this side. Visible, infrared, UV, microwave, x-ray. Somehow or other we ended up with... Um, the entire half of the belt full, even though even though we literally copy pasted this and did exactly the same thing. I'm not understanding how that happened at all. Actually, how, how is this different? Apart from the fact that UV is on the right here and on the... I mean, UV is at the end of the input belt here and at the start of it here. But I don't think that should make a difference. is taking a while to unload as well because it's one inserter per cargo wagon. But considering we only need six, uh, what is it, 6.8 items per second for each of these cards, that won't be a problem in the long run. Yeah, I'm... maybe it was because I... I doubt it, but the only variable I can think of is because I was playing with the stack sizes over here. Um... Okay, now it looks like we're overloading this half of the belt. Except I think we got... no, we didn't. Okay. Yeah, the stack size is a problem. Um, Three point four items per second. It needs to have a stack size greater than two, uh, greater than one. The thing is, I don't know that the stack size is the problem here. The problem is as soon as uh, as soon as there's a gap where we don't have that particular resource on the belt for just one tick then it tries to put a stack onto the belt I doubt if it would have got stuck like this if we had all of our inputs, um, but that's the test of a good sushi belt system. We could always just try extending this out a bit further as well. Oh no, no. Um, crap. I'll turn these into filter inserters. Oh, and that made them try again. That's, that's great. That chest is full. 
not helping. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go there in person. Unless I want the spiders to end up carrying a bunch of these cards. Okay, so we're going to set our filters accordingly. And no condition. everything we can back into the chests. Oh, it's not gonna... It's not gonna put what's in its hand back in the chest. Well, that's kind of rude. Okay. Did we get our nuclear plant? We did. Fantastic. Have we not powered up yet? There we go. Perfect timing. Also, do we need any more stack inserters here? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, so we're actually bottlenecking on uh, the cannons recharging now. Perfect. Alright, let's head back to Nalvis. Away we go. And that should be the end of our Holmanite problems for a very long time to come. It is just constantly raining Holmanite here. Cool. And back we are on Nalvis. Might just... Put these Spidertrons in a chest for now. Kind of funny that we can do that. And I would like to go to Orbit. Let's do that now. Is there anything I want to take to orbit? Not particularly. I should stop requesting ammo as well. Uranium rounds. Okay. How much have we got in here? Nothing. How have we got nothing? Let me just double check this real quick. Um, the system in Navis Orbit Small should be requesting... We're looking for 60,000 of these, 30,000 of these, which is more than enough to fill a rocket at all times. And... Once it fills a rocket, we, we subtract what we've got in the robot network. And once we fill a rocket here, uh, it'll launch. Uh, okay. 
somehow we got all of these satisfied at exactly the same time. And our rocket here is, in fact, empty. Feels weird. Should I take anything with me, though? I don't think so. I think we're fine. Did that train just hit me? I think that train just hit me while I was uh, flying in a rocket. That's a little bit rude. Okay, let's head over here. And we'll get our construction spiders on the remote. Which one's the leader? This one? Not a bug, a feature? Apparently. Blank observation frames go brr. Oh, I forgot we needed coal for this. That reminds me, I've been thinking about Sending up barrels instead of coal and ice for fluids for a long time. Or at least as well as uh, coal and ice. Alright, do we have all of our resources here now? Fantastic. Um, what are you missing? Visible? How about you get started with that? And oh, I changed the settings on those, didn't I? Wait a sec. I think I messed it up when I changed it to a filter because it stopped being. Enable, disable. Okay. Get this one started as well. Give me some visible. Give me some UV. For the follow Platos Pigeon. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is it Plato's Pigeon? Okay. So the test will be once all of this gets going properly. Wait, what? Oh, the output is blocked somehow. Because we need both sides of the sushi belt to be working. Uh, because we didn't merge and split here. Maybe we should merge and split. On the other hand, once this gets going, it should be fine. Why do we only have one machine active here so far? Oh, there we go. Two. Three. So how many items do we need on that side of the belt? Only 17. 
Uh, 17 out of a possible 22.5. Um, is three quarters. We need three quarters of this half of the belt to be full. But we need to limit the items going in enough. So that it doesn't oversaturate it. Um, might be a little bit tricky. Also, why are we out of visible? Hold on. I was going to say, we should be consuming visible at exactly the same time pace as everything else. Let's fix the belts. So if we um, if we extend this reed belt all the way over here it's definitely going to work. And it's going to be too slow to satisfy the machines. What we're hoping is if we get just the right number of tiles to check um, for whichever resource it is, we're going to prevent oversaturating and we're going to keep all of these machines going full speed. Currently it is looking like we're going a bit too slow, so let's remove one of these and see what happens. Also let me just confirm... 0 0.491 fast inserters for each of these resources. So if it was stack size 3, we would want this swinging about half the time. Definitely need to remove a little bit more belt. But if we go any further, I think it's going to jam again. You will still oversaturate if you don't check the belts in front of the inserter, because the one you put on because the the one you put on moves out so fast. Um. When you're first loading them in, yes, that is a good point. Although, now that we've done a lap, um, I don't think it matters. But yeah, normally that would probably be... That would cause it... That would cause us to put way too much of the first thing onto the belt. So that actually suggests to me that we can remove more of this now, as long as we don't take those items off the belt, like all of them. might even want to reduce these a little bit more. Or instead of that, we could change the number that we're allowed to have on the belt. I 
Okay, let's say... Let's just change it one at a time. Uh, we're going to say... Less than two. we need the half belt here to be 75% full, but that would be like this part as opposed to this part. I think we're getting close. Okay, let's uh, let's try three. That is less than three. So if there's nothing, uh, they should swing twice with a stack size of two. Given the rate of the lights turning on and off, that looks kind of promising to me. Maybe not. We've got nine of these on, possibly consistently. We're so close. Okay. Will switching it to four be going too far? Actually, that should be... Mm, I was going to say that should be perfect in theory because... Four would mean exactly one of these tiles saturated with half a belt for each of them. But I suspect it's not going to work that way. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You can copy logic configurations, the shift right click and paste with left. Yeah, but I need this uh, to be checking for a different type of data card for each of these uh, inserters. Repeatedly crafting. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. This is... I thought we'd set it up so that it would be consistently keeping up with about nine, but it seems to have slowed, slowed down after that. And that one's still set to three, as opposed to four, so it's just being a bit inconsistent. What if we set the stack size to three again? Actually, shouldn't that cause it to jam, because we had it We initially had it set to stack size 3 and reading this for 0 of each uh, type of card. But that was before we got all of the cards here. Now they're actually being consumed. Kind of changes things a little bit. 
also something I didn't get around to mentioning before. Uh, if we really want to be super consistent with the shape of these, we can use um, like a crisscross of red and green wires. Um, can I get some belt? Need the construction spiders over here. That is actually starting to look pretty good. Although we still don't have... Visible data is struggling to get onto the belt. I'm thinking these should be further apart, actually. So that they don't block each other. It's very up and down how fast this is going. Good to see we're constantly making Holmium accumulators. Very, very good to see that, actually. Uh, 1.13 per second. I think that is probably good enough. Although, when I built this, we didn't have wide area beacons. So sadly, I didn't leave a gap. We could probably just move some of these... Uh, storage chests, though. Let's use picket dollies. There we go. Wide area beacon. Fast inserters. I mean, fast uh, speed modules. It's probably better to read more belts like 10 instead of 5 and change the max, th max threshold allowed in the section. Yeah, well, the easiest, um, the most consistent version of this would be to read the whole belt. We can resort to that if, if we feel like it. Um, but that is a good point as well. The other thing that I wanted to demonstrate here, um, that we might do. What are these connections? What are you connected to? There you go. Okay. Um, this might read here. And this would read here. And this would read here. And this would read here. And... This would read here, for example. So you could have each of them just reading the one bit of belt before them. Might be easier to put the blank data cards on the output belt, and then have two belts for your data cards. Would be cooler if you could get this to work though. Yeah, I mean, that's why we're doing it in the first place, because it's cooler. Um, I think I will go for reading more of the belt and setting different limits. So let's see, let's actually math this out a bit. 
We'll ignore the bits on the side. We've got 13 sections of belt times four because you can fit four items on half a belt is 52 items divided by six is 8.67 um, consider that our stack size is three and I think and add a little space as well I think if we say less than six so five six seven eight that should use up most of the belt um, considerably more than three quarters of it Less than six, less than six, less than six, less than six, and less than six, and we're not limiting the stack size. So now we just need to get this thing in motion again. Uh, I'm noticing it's visible observation data that literally all of these are lacking. Uh, that is very interesting. Okay, and read... Oh, all of these need to be set to read belt contents hold. Um, cool. Let's do the opposite over here and set those up like so. We're still having a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, visible data is not getting put on the belt fast enough because the other items are blocking it. That might change a bit once we build the whole thing out a bit more. Why divide six instead of five? Uh, because I counted the wrong number. That's why. So that'll that'll leave a bit more space than we had in mind. So thirteen times four, fifty-two divided by five, ten point four. Um. So I guess we want to go less than 8. I've put Nephrim Science Sushi Belt in blueprints if you want some inspiration. Sounds cool. Um, but that said, I, th I really do think we need to move these chests apart a bit. Even just moving them one tile apart each, um, it's probably going to help a lot. So that the inserters don't block each other. I'll let the blank data cards flow out so we can edit this without messing with everything too much. There we go. And let's stop these belts as well. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, except we need to multiply that by two. Two, four, six, seven. Yeah, if we want to have one belt for each thing, it's going to take up some more space. Although, it turned out we definitely had that space. I could definitely consider moving that. It's 
especially if I did this build again. Okay, are you just about done swinging? Uh, we've got all those settings over there, so I can remove this. Let's use picker dollies. And... See where we want to put this. That's perfect, actually. just have to copy this like so. Wait, what? Oh, I see. Except we need to update those settings anyway. It was less than eight, wasn't it? back again. And I guess here we'll do to put the blank data cards on that side of the belt. Um, we're going to need to move this whole thing. I want to pick up the cards so they're all in my inventory and I can put them back. Just delete that part for now. Actually, I could probably just swap these around. And then I'll be able to copy paste flip after doing this. Now we just have to line these up with their respective chests. Wait, no, not like that. Okay. Hey, Silent Storm. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I think that one's already in the right place. Alright, so then we... Copy this, paste it here, and figure out how we're going to lay this bit out. Like data cards. Well, let's let's redo this layout first. Why are there two of these? Actually, that might be a terrible idea because of the belt layout. Yeah, that was a mistake. I'm not picking up a chest full of each of these. Let's just swap them around again. And that 
doesn't appear to be connected to the wire now. I did copy the settings though. Okay. two to go here. Uh, I need some splitters, please. there. And last but not least. Actually, I wonder... No, it's fine. Okay, so then blank data cards are going to be looking a bit awkward. Um, probably no matter how we go about this. So I think we'll just split it here. Machines turning. That should probably do it. Let's put some blanks in here. Um, I'm just going to drop all of my x rays. UV visible array and microwave. And the ones on the left seem to be going at full speed as well. So it really was just or at least after the other changes we made. Um, it really was just the... Nope, one of the machines is turned off. It seems to be mostly going at full speed. Oh, I know. Um, if we remove this and this, then our math should be a bit more accurate. So we've got 13 times 4 is the maximum that can fit there. On that half of the belt, 52 items, divided by 5 uh, cards, 10.4. So if we aim for 10 of each type uh, in this area, and the stack size is 3, we should insert once it drops to 7. Although, obviously it's not perfect because even now, uh, the one that's further along the belt tends to have more trouble. So really, if we were doing exactly the same thing, 
well, effectively the same thing, but we were merging it with a splitter, we'd probably not be having any problems with this. Of course, it's a little trickier to do the merge with the splitter after we've combined these belts. We actually seem to have run out of all of the other types of data card, though. I think we need to bump this train limit up to three, because we've got three different resources to pick up here. Um, as for these data cards, these are completely full. Fantastic. And these ones are pretty much the same. Although we seem to be running out of microwave observation frames. Oh, we've run out of blank observation frames. Have we actually, or do we need more trains picking up from here? 12k, 30k. Yeah, we've run out of light oil. Wait, no, this is... Yeah, it is light oil. So that's a problem that's not going to resolve itself shortly. All right, we'll leave our imperfect sushi system that is nevertheless bottlenecked on inputs for now. Um, if I were to do this part again, I would use splitters to insert with uh, input priority because this effectively has input priority for what's already on the belt, which is not what we want. In fact, it's the total opposite. Um, another thing you can do that would make this work better, even if you use the inserters, is spread these out even more. Ideally, have um, have the inserters equidistant apart around the entire sushi belt. And that'll avoid that problem. Some of your factories look like they're waiting on crafting... Crafting Finis? Maybe they could use another speed module upgrade? Uh, which ones? We're, we're pretty much bottlenecking on resources everywhere. Why do we have no Holmium cable? Because we have no Holmium cable. And here we go. Holmium cable is being produced and picked up. Wait a sec. We've actually got Holmanite here still. Uh, I don't think we're short on any of these resources. Now that we've got uh, approximately 80 plus Holmium core fragments coming in per second. Might be time to make another block uh, to make Holmium ingots and such. I'd like to redesign this, but for the moment, I think we'll just do a copy paste. And we'll put this here. Um, construction spiders, where did we put them? That's actually a good question. There they are. Okay. Over here, please. 
Do we need anything unusual like a uh, boiler? Yes, we do. Do I have one of the spiders at least carrying a boiler? Nope. Okay. Are all the biters gone? Yes, indeed. Not a single one left on Nalvis. Oh, that reminds me. I was going to start deconstructing the uh, uh, the walls. Let's get to it. But first, do we have a trash pickup here? We don't. I think we'll just use the construction spiders. And away they go. I'm going to need a bigger gang of deconstruction spiders. I guess we could convert some of the military spiders to deconstructors, or all of them for that matter. Are they already full? I don't think so. We've got some weird bot behavior over here as well. We're not going to end up with bots hovering here until the end of time, are we? It could happen. Uh, why don't we start by just... doing this? And we should also make sure we remove... train stops. There's a train coming here already, apparently. Switch off the requests. Actually, it's probably fine to just deconstruct that now. There's some light oil, if we could be bothered to get it. Actually, maybe we can. Why don't we turn this into... Where is the light oil actually going to go, though, if I turn this into a pickup station? Maybe somewhere. That's where. Um, so we're going to say provide threshold is a thousand. Short or long trains. That was quick. There we go. Okay, so if possible, a train will come and take this light oil. Let's turn the pumps around. And see if we can get rid of all these roboports. Which should get our construction bots to hover back somewhere useful. That's going to take a little while to sort out. So what's our next step for Astronomic Science Pack? Uh, we need to make the catalogs, of course. Astronomic Catalog 1, we can already make. A broad Astronomic Catalog. Microwave and X-ray, we've already got. Gravitational Lensing. 
and gravi gravity wave data. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Let's start over here. What do we require for... Gravitational lensing is actually just astrometric data for the input. And so is gravity wave data, basically. This one uses fluid as well. And they both output junk data cards some of the time. Okay, why don't we do the gravity wave data first? Because that includes dealing with the fluids. And then we can copy paste um, to make the gravitational lensing data. So it's literally just one in, one out, but also junk data cards uh, plus fluid. And we do this in O. Oh. Gravimetric versus laser. I don't suppose they happen to be the same shape? Not even remotely close. Okay. Um, laser facility is the same shape as thermodynamics facility, for example. Um, this is one belt in, one belt out, fluid in and fluid out, so we can copy, uh, we can copy this layout for this block. New a recipe with fluid and solid inputs? That's like every recipe in space exploration. Okay, so let's put this here. Most important thing is to switch off uh, these constant combinators before a train delivery is triggered. Um, and our recipe is... Oh, this is thermodynamic. Let's put... Let's do a decon planner. Thermodynamics facility. And place a laser facility. And we're going to do inputs this way, outputs this way. Maybe I won't enjoy late game as much as I thought then? Oh no. Gravity wave data. Give it some speeds. And double check the input rate. The input output for physical objects is quite slow. Um, and so is fluid think. Put this here, here, here. Cool. And now we just need to change our input and output stations. Super cool thermo fluid. And it's negative 10 thermofluid out output. Um, I could try just setting a really high priority pickup for the negative 10 degree thermofluid. But there aren't many places that request negative 10 degree thermofluid. I'm thinking it'll end up blocked if I do it this way. So I might do what... Uh, what we did over here, where we take our negative 10 degree thermofluid and turn it back into negative 27. Wait, what? 
This is negative 100. Negative 10 becomes negative 100. And 25. Except this is super cold. So we're going to need two hypercoolers at least. Um, if we leave this layout intact so that we can double this. I was going to say I'm not sure where we're going to fit this, but considering we have these flat solars, we can probably get away with it. Um, let's remove this pipe. A cooler. I'm hoping with just two to four hypercoolers we can keep up with everything here. So let's say we double this. Um, that outputs a thousand cold thermofluid per second. Yikes. Okay. Um, so we need to turn cold thermofluid into, back into negative 273. Oh, hold on. It outputs cool thermofluid, negative 10. That's even worse. And I, I mean, that's what I thought the first time. Okay, so we need to input cool thermofluid. And we need to take the negative 100 and turn it into negative 273. And we need to pump the 25 degree thermofluid down here. So if we speed module this, I don't know where we're going to fit it under a beacon either. We might have to have one down here even. So how much is this? That is nowhere near fast enough. Uh, at least the ratio is perfect. All of the cold thermofluid gets turned into negative 273 and 25. But we would actually need 10 times this to deal with this entire block if we doubled it. Um, so maybe we just don't do that. If I had been particularly uh, overly cautious, we could have done the same thing as I did with thermofluid here, but with the other two intermediate fluids, cool and cold, so that there's a drop off here and we make sure we leave room for it. Um, but yeah. We can always just double this block later on. Also, how fast is this going to output? Um, 16 gravity wave data per second. How about instead of doubling the whole thing, um, we just fit as many as we can. And we'll just take some off the bottom to make room for the coolers. I'm guessing two of these will be more than enough to keep up with one of these columns. Also, we might not need as much belt here. Um, let's see. 
cool thermofluid is still net rate positive. That's not what we want. Oh, wow. Okay, how about this? This. This. We can... Where's the cool thermofluid? Here it is. We can only keep up with three of these? Wait, it's outside of the beacon, though. Okay, let's move that. Put this here for a second. And see if it can keep up with six of these. Uh, cold thermofluid... Oh, that's always going to be zero. Cool thermofluid is still positive. What about five? Still positive. Four? Four is actually perfect. Jeez. Okay, so... So that's going to be it. Um, we're going to have our cool thermofluid output. It's going to input here. And then... How can I rotate this? Oh, that's good. So the... No, that's only negative 100. That's not good. This one's negative 100. This is 25. And this one's negative 100. need this pipe. So let's connect this like so. That could work. Except I'd rather have the negative 275 point here uh, somehow I just don't think the way we can rotate this there's going to be a good way to do it is this it? This is as good as it's going to get. Um, we can move this up a bit. So it's going to output the 275 straight up here. Um, and the 25 down here. Cool thermofluid zero. And... Oh, that's too far from the beacon. Um... Also, I don't know if we're going to be able to mirror this part very well. We'll probably just have to... Uh, we probably don't need four beacons in this block. this here 
That's actually perfect. Okay, so in order to touch this beacon, these two need to be vertical if they're going to line up with this column. they pretty much have to be shaped this way. This one pipe in my inventory is actually very irritating <laughs> because I go to drag a line and it just stops everything. Um, we could probably move that over a tile. And then... This is a 7. This is a 5. And the 25 degree thermo fluid comes out at a very awkward angle. should be using uh, deconstruction planner and stuff. Okay. And then that can actually go there. And I'm thinking it's going to be really weird and awkward and difficult trying to do this on this side as well. Yeah, that's going to have to be the same. We can connect these two. And then the negative 275 needs to find its way over here, which is a bit difficult. Maybe it could go back up here instead. And we could find something that be consistent across all of these. That's not quite right. Oh. Yeah, how about not that? I think we'll just... Different fluids? Oh, I see. That's hideous. But I guess it gets the job done. And they're all touched by the beacon, just barely. That's not symmetric indeed. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think we can do much better. 
Unless... Unless what? If we do it like this, that won't fit there. If we just do a pair of them underneath each other like this... Um... Maybe. Hold on. Is this as far apart as it could be? Nope. This part is, though. I was thinking of having the output go like that. But we can't fit it that way. I think we're just going to have to go with something like this and cry ourselves to sleep. Not going to need all these belts. What's the output? Only 16 per second. Why are there multiple? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we, are, we do have junk data cards to deal with here. <laughs> uh, we're not going to need a fancy loader this time. What are we going for? Gravitational? Or is it the other one? Gravity wave data. Oh, also this can be an each anyway, so no need to check that one this time. We'll use uh, regular stack inserters. And... Gravity... Wave data. Fantastic. Oh no. Uh, I don't think we're going to need our speed beacon down here. We will need a pickup for junk data cards and 25 degree thermofluid. I'm guessing the rate of junk data cards is going to be very low. Actually, it's faster than the gravity wave data. Okay. So I think we will just use uh, the usual loader here then. Okay. Now that we've removed this clutter, let's figure out how this is going to look each time. It's not so bad. Let's move our spiders over a little bit. Yeah, it's not great. What can we do? Okay, that goes there. That goes there, and... This goes here. I should try SE again. I never get far past the first planet. Um, what exactly makes you stop? Okay. Oh, what's the total throughput for both physical items? 37 plus 16. I have a sinking feeling that is considerably more than one belt. Um, in that case, let's split here. Jump data cards to the left. And 
over here is going to be a little bit different. Because we need this one to merge. I think we'll put this here. Add a splitter. Turn that round. And that's not too bad. Actually, I think this would look slightly tidier. And then this one is going to go here. almost perfect. What? What? Why are these? Oh, I see. Yeah, they're all going to be different. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Perfect. Except, of course, he has underground pipes to nowhere, which don't connect. Uh, possible. Like this one. Where else? This one? And this one as well. Look, it was just it was just for aesthetics, that's that's what I'm gonna say. Right side, top side, right side of the belt and left. Top side. Also we now need to merge the That one. I think that looks better, actually. then I could just be a little cheeky and use the splitter that we've already got here. That should be fine. That looks really weird though. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Is that the whole build? Oh, we need to s we need to configure the uh, inputs. But other than that, um, this is just going to be everything equals zero. Astro metric data and same thing on this side uh, input pipes are already in place you can connect the top input of the right hand side this is for the hypercoolers directly to the long pipe no or are the inputs fixed uh, if by the inputs fixed you mean I can only rotate this I can't like make one of these outputs go left instead of right 
Hey, hey, El Poncho. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's do this also. And copy this across. Cryo machines have only two inputs, but only one output for the cold stuff. Yeah, that's correct. So, whether we like it or not, it takes two inputs here, um, either of which could be where we put our cold thermo fluid. This one on the left has to be um, 25 degree thermo fluid, and the one on the right has to be cold thermo fluid. So there's no way for us to make it symmetrical with the, with this layout. Most of the time there's only really one option, yeah. Another good example that's clearer, I think, is when you've got mechanical facilities with, for example, one fluid input and two fluid outputs. Um, the closest we can get them together is two tiles apart. So that, well, technically one tile apart might work, but it'll probably complain that we're trying to mix fluids here. Um, yeah, there's no way to, I don't know how it's, oh, uh, there's no way to have it set up like these ones where they're right next to each other. where it's just one fluid in, one fluid out. Okay. I think that is our build though. So let's request some astrometric data. Guessing that stacks to 50. Couple of train loads. How fast do we go through it? Very quickly. How fast are we making it? Probably not that quickly. 68 per second, actually. In theory, we can keep up with that indefinitely. I notice the belt hasn't stopped moving, even though it looks full. Interesting. So we must have cut it really, really close with the way we set this up. I see only one of these inserters on this side and zero on this side um, that are not trying to input at the moment. Um, anyway, two train loads of astrometric. Uh, a little bit more than one train load of super cooled. Change the station name to what we're requesting. And switch it on. Oh, I forgot to check if the belt inputs are sufficient. I'm pretty sure they are, though. Um, this is two belts of input. And we only need 27.2 per second. Easy enough. Um, and then we just need to make sure our 25 degree thermo fluids are all connected. So I think for that we'll just connect this like so. And... Surprisingly no good way to connect this. Um... Well, we need to do this anyway. 
So, one tile off. That is heartbreaking. There's no way to squeeze this over one more tile. Okay, so we need 14. That's 7 and 7. Um, let's see. This goes... What? Huh? What? Why is... Uh, let's start with this part. And then it's two sevens. No, it's not, because this is... This part's different, that's why. Okay, that's fine. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, we can do a 9 and a 3. There's that red stuff in between. Um, not sure what you mean by red stuff, but yeah, it's not the same. This goes here and here. And that's actually would be perfect if not for the fact we can't connect this here. Seven and seven. What's our max rate for fluids here? Uh, 544 per second for any one fluid. I think we'll be fine. So... That's a really convenient spot to connect. And it's already working. Fantastic. Now, if only there weren't so much wasted space here. Oh well. Junk data cards, gravity wave data, and 25 degree thermofluid are all appearing in the train network now. Not a difficult build, just the ratios and making it fit in the block make me sad. Okay, so that just leaves the simpler version of this where we don't have to deal with fluid, and the uh, facilities are smaller. Let's put a uh, rail block here. Let's get our scaffolding spiders. And let's make a start on... Uh, gravitational lensing data. Can we get some... what little scaffolding we can over here now? Just to keep nitpicking, the beacons aren't aligned. Oh, true. Oh, that's, that's the kind of nitpicking I can appreciate. Thank you. Put some more solars as well. I guess we could use this space for more solar power. Why not? Especially considering we don't have to think about... Oh, that's a good fit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's start with... This is very hard to do while the spiders are placing a million train signals. Uh, 
um, let's do a snap to grid relative just to make this easy. Figures. Actually, oh, that's fine. should connect there. Where are our scaffolders? Here they come. Okay, I think I will take a quick break back in just a few minutes. And we'll let the spiders do their thing in the meantime. And just so it doesn't jump in anyone's face randomly. For the next half hour, let's go to... Sponsors. Back shortly. Okay, we have most of our block. What's up with these missing bits? More of this, uh, okay then. Got our solar panels and stuff. Fantastic. 
Maybe I should try fitting exactly the amount of solar that we need to pay for a block. No, because blocks are going to be, like, switched off a lot of the time. So then maybe just like a decent fraction of it. Net 15.584 megawatts? That's a lot. Okay. What are we doing now? The, uh, the last card, I hope. Uh, gravitational lensing. I don't know if we've made any gravimetric facilities, actually. Um, I need the knapsack. Facility, gravimetric. We have not made any gravimetric facilities. Let's order some. Gravimetric. And we'll set some requests in our construction spiders to carry them. Grav. Where's the gravimetric? There it is. Gravimetric. 15. Oh, that's the wrong thing. There we go. Okay, so all of our spiders are now going to be requesting one stack of gravimetric facilities. Custom solar OP. Well, especially in orbit, it's OP because there's no night time. Um, it, there's no night time and it gives way, way, way more power than on the ground. So, no need for accumulators, just throw them down and you're done. Speaking of which, um, why don't we stay way ahead of the game and expand our solar panels up here? Definitely a good decision to make a rail block system, well, just something in the rail system which would automatically supply everything we need, uh, scaffolding, solar panels, etc. Half of the laser facilities don't work in the new block. Products finished six. Products finished six. Products... Oh, they have no... Yeah, they all have exactly six products finished because they have no fluid output. At first I thought they were working because they didn't have zero products finished. Uh, but the fact that they all have the exact same number um, strongly implies it's just that the fluid is missing. Also, I think we need to mirror this output fluid, maybe? No, I think we're good. Because they all have the processing from their own column. So we don't actually need this connection right here. in this instance. I wonder why that was missing from the copy-paste. Probably because we're doing two different things here. And this one doesn't need output fluid. Okay, how many gravimetric facilities have we made? 24. Let's start. In fact, it's probably enough. Um, 
that we can lay out a beacon and figure out a layout. It's going to be pretty straightforward. It's only going to depend on uh, the throughput that we need on the belts. Oh, this is the same size as the other thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly the same. So we can fit uh, eight on each side here. And trying to get more than a little bit horizontally is just going to be very unfortunately inconvenient to try and fit in this rail block. That's three. Four. Let's get our module inserter to recognize them. Nothing but speed. Oh, whoops. Okay, so let's check our laser facilities are working. Fantastic. Dig that low red glow, uh, dark red glow. Um, let's do module insert. And there's only one recipe, at least for now. Negative 70% power consumption. How fast would this be? Um, 1.25 per second. Really? That is slow. That, that is incredibly slow. Okay. I'm thinking what we might do is bring these together here. Speed 6? Uh, I don't know if we have that many yet. It might be a good idea though. Oh wow. Um, 471. How many is this? We could also maybe full speed the beacon. It's kind of hard to see where those line up, but bouncing over the beacon makes it very clear. Auto save. Only one input and two outputs. Or maybe just one output, yeah. Um, so that is 3.19. Yeah, it's one to, it's almost one to one. Sometimes we get nothing, apparently. But it's about the same input and output. 3.36 per second, I think. Um, uh, I want to see if we can... We could definitely squeeze um, 24 of these into one beacon. In fact, we could probably... Oh, that's right, we weren't trying to do... Th we're not trying to do three of these this time. Okay, I think... We'll do it like this. And then... Like this. 
That makes more sense. So we won't actually need to do any squiggly belts or anything. Don't think we have enough facilities to rate calc this yet, so let's do this times 32 is only 8.96 per second. Yeah, we're definitely getting the speed sixes for this. Uh, if, if ever there was a use case for our so far rare and expensive uh, modules, this is it. Aurorasol, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Bots might be faster. Um, we're not going to fit that much, that many more into this block with bots, I don't think. Making more speed modules. Uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of speed sixes here. Come to think of it, did I not request those to be brought to the mall? Apparently not. Okay, let's go... So if I just type 6, there we go. Um, uh, why don't we just go for a chest full of each of these? So that should bring those to our mall. Now then, uh, module, inserter, gravimetric, and actually, more importantly, wide area beacon, speed six, go. And over this side as well. This need for speed, indeed. Uh, so, 32 of these. Now we're looking at a whopping 14.48 input and output per second. Um, so since we only need... Even if we double this, we only need one belt. So I think I'd like to... copy this here. And it's going to be a little tight with the train stops and s belts and stuff. Um... Uh, we can probably manage. Let's do some drop-off stations. Forgot the minus for the module requests. Oh. Yeah, we just told LTN that we've got stuff available. Uh, good point, thank you. Where is it? There we go. Good catch, thank you. Mass, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so 64 of these, just to confirm again, is not even a red belt. We're going to do our... I think we'll do our loader... On this side. And we'll do the same for the junk data cards. Input stations are going to be very straightforward as well. The 
considering how slow this is, it almost feels silly to have more than a few chests, but we may as well have the storage. I did that backwards, didn't I? Or rather, I used a unloader. I mean a loader. Balanced unloaders, slow compact, and this goes here. And I think we can just... Just barely fit this here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, I think. Uh, let's copy this first. Actually, that's one, two tiles there, one tile there. Is that right? Yeah, one tile in from lining up with the station. Oh, this is taking up a tile. So it's actually two tiles from the chest there. And this one goes here. I really wish I could prod module landfill. I guess. Considering how ridiculously fast it is, um, we really don't need speed modules for landfill. Okay, so a fast inserter is going to be more than sufficient. Copy paste this part. And we'll get our construction spiders to come back with more gravimetric facilities once the bots catch up. Maybe I should get the spiders to carry some speed nines. Um, speed sixes, I should say. Apparently there was... negative seven speed module sixes in this logistic network a second ago, and now there's none? That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. Um... Module... Efficiency 6, check. How, how are there no speed mod? I didn't have anything requesting speed modules somewhere. Where did they go? Actually, there probably wasn't enough here since I took some to trigger a delivery. So I have no idea why that logistic network just had any signal for speed sixes. Really happy to see Holmium accumulators being spammed. That's going to be a nice upgrade to put everywhere. Okay. Um... It feels weird, but our inputs are already done. Let's add some stack filters. Double check the resource that goes into this. Astrometric data. OP. 
copy that over here. Astrometric data request only. Create a request for one stack. Double check the stack is 50. And I don't think we're going to need to request a whole lot. I'll set this just a bit above one train load. And I'm sure unless we've got serious throughput issues, the trains are not going to have a whole lot of trouble keeping up with... Um, Well, it's now 57.92 per second. Or at least it will be once we've got these 128 uh, gravimetric facilities with speed module 9s. Most importantly, we do have the speed 9s in the beacons. So if we're about to run out um, that's going to have the most positive effect. How many gravs have we made? Gravimetric facility, 94. Uh, that is not enough. We need 128 to finish the whole block. But I guess we may as well place what we can for the moment. We're missing aeroframe poles. No, we're not. The bots are supplying them. They're just supplying them a little bit slowly. How common is aeroframe pole? Jetpack, add-on power pole, science, cryogun, weapon delivery cannon, Pylon, Gravimetric Facility, Microwave Telescope, 120, X-Ray Telescope, Aeroframe Scaffold, I don't think we'll be mass producing those here, Spaceship Console, okay, so overall the rate that we need those poles, it's not high enough that we're going to shove them into these chests. Okay. Oh wow, look at it spin. <laughs> it's so slow, like it's still less than half an item per second. Um, and yet the animation is so fast we can't see it. Now we need to belt, well let me just check. It said we were going to need two belts, right? 128 of these. Yeah, so one belt on each side is going to be more than enough. Wait, what? Oh, that... Crafting speed, 9.05. Yeah, that's as fast as it goes. Uh, 64 of these is 28 per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need one belt from each side of the block. Um, we'll start with this. Bring it over here. This one. Merge it. Uh, I'll move it here so that we can split according to which item is which. Uh, what's our final product called? Gravitational lensing data. Lensing data? I'm sure he's aware. No outputs yet, indeed. Um, so this is going to go down here. We're going to need to merge with the 
input from the other side. That's wrong. over here. Next this to LTN so it knows what's here. This is Lensing Data Provider. And then I think we'll just start with merging the final product outputs. Actually, this one might be... Was it junk data cards? Yeah, junk data cards. Junk data cards go down here. Same deal. And then how is this going to look? Can we do it something like this, perhaps? Not quite. That's not too bad. And then we just bring this over here. Easy enough. So this is yet another. Uh, this will be an active, active pickup actually, high priority. Um, this is yet another junk data card. High priority pickup. How many do we have now? 144. Fantastic. Let's bring our construction spiders back. And we'll finish this block. Could have them meet in the middle and do a splitter there. Um, this is fine. We need two belts for each resource, so... Yeah. We also need to copy our... Inserters... And... I almost forgot... I think we'll actually use long arms um, for one side of these, since all of this is so slow. Let's just check again. Uh, less than half a unit per second. So I'll I'll use navsat to make sure I'm not sticking this temporary blueprint in my inventory. Snap to grid relative. And on the other side as well. And now we can just merge like so. I find uh, using copy-paste flip is a much easier way to copy and flip around these filters. Um, as opposed to this fiddly little thing here. Now the only question that I haven't calculated yet is... Do we have enough speed modules to finish the build? Judging by the fact that I'm carrying zero at the moment? Uh, very no. But that's okay, we'll bring them over here later. 
Fantastic. What is going on here? Would need 500. 4 times 128 plus 512 plus 4 times uh, 15. 60. So something like 572, is it? Why is this getting blocked, though? Oh, 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 oh. After doing all of that, remembering that we... Um, that we have two belts of output. Well, we don't have two belts of output for junk data cards. Uh, in fact, we have 2.3168 per second. Um, so this part doesn't have to change, actually. Um, and we could just put that like so, if we want to. Where's the wolf whistle sound thing? Uh, we don't have one of those. Wolf whistle. Um, why do we stop? Oh, right, obviously. Okay, cool. And we've confirmed this before, but the fast inserters, even with a stack size of two, um, I'm pretty sure they can keep up with two full belts. It is actually stopping a little bit sometimes. Um, but we don't even need two full belts, because 55 is not that much more than one belt. Although, that said, we don't have a lane balancer, and the inserters really, really prefer to pick up from the near side. One tricky way that we can uh, fix that is just to do it like this. Since I can't see a good spot to squeeze in a lane balancer, we're just going to make it so that the inserters take from the respective sides of the belt equally. Cool. So that leaves us what? Can we met? Can we now make all of our catalog stuff? A top astrometric catalog, sorry, astronomic catalog we've been able to do for a while. Uh, broad astronomic catalog we just got working, or just got all the prerequisites. Fantastic. So now the only question is gravitational lensing data. Lensing data is where do we want to put our block um, wave data wave data so we've got our data here, here, here and here. Seems fairly obvious. Let's bring our scaffolding spiders up this way. And 
Fantastic. Well, I'm glad we got mostly those speed modules built just in time to uh, try to build that. How many of these speed modules are we missing exactly, I wonder? If I make sure my RoboPort covers all of them. Um, we should be able to see... 206. That's kind of a lot. Okay. Are we just about done placing signals yet? Nine UPS FPS is fine. It's fine in the sense that it only happens while we're placing rail signals. Once we're done, we're back up to normal. Right now it's going to drop to... Let's see... 12, 11, 10, 9, 8.7, 7.6, that is getting pretty extreme, 5.9, ouch, I might have to, tr I might have to start trying to lay all of the, uh, <laughs> signals ahead of time, like, off-stream at this rate. Okay, so we're gonna copy-paste our usual... That's our first one. Um, I think we made an updated version of this. Yep. Uh, that has room for beaconing all of these. So we'll copy-paste the first two catalogs from Bioscience. And it should be exactly the same, except for um, except for some inputs and outputs. We might need to go fund me for T hacks to buy a quantum computer. Um, no comment. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see, we've got Bacons, Catalog 1, Broad Catalog, IO should be the same for fluids, negative 100, and 25. Negative 125. Where is our fluid input output? Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, this is actually fine. Okay. Negative 100 comes down in here, and this is our 25 degree pickup. Um, we just need to update the station names when we're done. This seems like the usual UPS for a pi, pi playthrough. Ouch. Okay, so there's our fluid. Fantastic. Um, now we need to change the data card requests. Visible, infrared, UV, and astrometric. Visible. Infrared. So those two are going to share a belt. UV. And astrometric. And we also need to change the signals, uh, the enable condition on these inserters. Um, so this one's going to be visible. And this one here 
is going to be infrared. That'll keep them from outputting until all of their friends have finished outputting. And then they're all going to swing at the same time. And last but not least, astrometric. Copy paste that across. And we can set up this station now. One, two, three, four. And let's look for just over one train load of each, I think. Actually, we've got room for three train loads of each. We should probably request a couple of train loads. That's not what I want to do. Sixteen K. And we can switch that one on now. And as for these ones. Microwave, X-ray, grav, and grav. Microwave. X-ray. Microwave. X-ray. Be that across. We can summon the train now, actually. Grav and grav and just double check those two gravs are different. Oh, don't forget to update the station name before we request a train. Fantastic. And hopefully by the time we set this up, we'll have some trains coming. Uh, we already did those two. Grav. And other grav. Grav. It really looks like they're the same card, especially especially when we zoom out. But uh, yeah, uh, depending on how long it's taking to get some of these cards in particular, shouldn't be too long before we get our astrometric catalogs. Let's change the name of this one. And this is broad. And there should be a red chest after that. Actually, I feel like the red chest part should come first. Broad passive provider. Fantastic. Now we need to make the final copy-paste edit um, where we turn astron astronomic catalogs and broad astronomic catalogs into uh, simulations and get whatever side inputs we need as well. So let's build that 
up here actually. And prepare for frame rate trouble. I think we're missing some. Nope, we're fine. Love those spider legs. Wow. It's almost getting to the point where we can count the seconds whenever we place a signal. Feels like maybe... Four or five hundred milliseconds? That is pretty harsh. You'd think it wouldn't have to think as long when we place a signal on a different uh, surface, but it all seems to accumulate um, together. LTN, on the other hand, seems to get a lot faster if we start making rail on a new surface. Okay. I want to see how our Holmanite throughput is doing. Every time I look here, we've got... Oh, we just ran out, actually. Uh, we've got Holmanite core fragments, which is absolutely fantastic. Do we have some in storage? Not yet. Oh, that's right. We were going to try making another block. We need pulverizers. And we need an electric boiler. Uh, and some old school beacons. So let's update the requests on our Constructortron. Um, I might have to jump in... How do I... Okay, I'm going to save player. Go to Constructortron. Um, look for boiler. There we go. Is there not... There should be like a button to switch uh, to set this to one stack. We only need one anyway. And we also need some pulverizers. The reason I'm taking the time to go to auto trash here is because we can use the search like that and find things that are set to zero already. Um, so we're going to save I'll just call this temp o -tron. And bring this back to player. Okay. temp o -tron. temp o -tron. Did it just remove all the chests? Well, we'll deal with that in a minute. Actually... One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we do need at least two of these to be requesting pulverizers to get this build done. So I'll just send them back to pick that stuff up. And bring them back here. Oh, I forgot to set a request for beacons as well. Regular old beacons. I think they stacked 10. How many beacons do we need here? Uh, 20. 
Okay. Do you have room? Yeah, you've got room. 20 beacons. Off you go. Make sure they do a little dance so all the bots can catch up with them. And send them back here. And our Holmanite uh, duplicate build should be complete next time we look. Fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why are all of your trains blocked in the new sections to the left? Um, oh, you're not kidding. That is, that isn't just traffic. That is, they look like they've stopped completely. Why is this one? Train limit one. And this train is trying to go to the same station. That should never have happened. Also, why do you have glass? Um, what's going on here? Something similar. How did you get gear? How, how after this long, after I changed things, do you suddenly have gears stuck in your cargo wagon? Um, that's really confusing. Are these all just queued up to come here? Train limit 5. Surely that's not... Look at all these trains! 1, 2, 3... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20. This is like... 30 trains that are just sitting around. Don't tell me they're all trying to get copper. Iron. Copper. Copper. The reason I built this over here was just to fix, uh, like, a traffic congestion. Trains of Vanilla, LTN, LTN. Factorio, the joys of trains and debugging, indeed. Verhoeven, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Um, they seem to be starting to move now that I got those two stuck copper trains going. I really, really don't understand how... Every once in a while lately, I find a train stuck at one of these ore stations with cogs or glass. It, I think it's always been cogs or glass stuck in one of the cargo wagons. I'll go back to lurking and let you fix this. Thank you. Simply recalculates the pathing for every train anywhere, even if completely disconnected with no way of getting anywhere near where you put your signals. That's unfortunate. If you put all trains in manual mode before placing signals, there's no lag. Ouch. Okay. It seems like it is slowly unraveling. I think most of the problem, uh, well, normally it's not a problem that this is set to a train limit of five, but I think most of the problem is that we had a train stuck here. Because normally we would have like one, two, three, four trains queuing here, which isn't a problem at all. And with other similar train stacking things over here. Um, it all just backed up enough. Um, this is one reason why 
I really like just having a train limit of one and multiple train stops for a big mine. Um, because you're never going to have a stacking problem this way. Okay. I think I will change that back to like limit two perhaps we've got all these other copper mines anyway even if some of them are getting a bit scarce oh there's no copper here now the map just lied to me until I looked again okay where did we put our deconstruction spiders are they still up here yeah, they are. Okay, where's the leader? Let's send them back to one of our malls. Preferably one of the ones with lots and lots of storage left over. They've been refusing to fix this for a while now. Ouch. Hey, we got our broad... Uh... Astro. We somehow got a broad astro before getting uh, regular astronomic catalogs. What? UV and infrared. This is uh, astrometric, which I thought we had a lot of, and UV. UV. UV observation frames. Oh, I'm guessing UV goes into something else. I mean, all of them go into multispectral. That's all equal. Uh... Astrometric, astrometric. What? Why are we so much slower on UV? Read the warning? You are suffocating. Uh oh. Uh, it's okay, we're only suffocating slowly. That said, let's go back to the mall. Also, if we just sit in a spider, we don't suffocate. It's fine, we only suffocated a bit. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's copy Bioscience. And... Edit things. Most importantly, switch off the constant combinators for the input stations. Slightly suffocating. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and instead of broad biological insight, uh, we're going to do broad Astronomic insight. Thank you for the follow, Bruce Wayne. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so then we're going to do astronomic simulation. Astro one. Astro. Uh. Just two recipes for Astro 1. They both have the same outputs, except for the volume of junk data cards. One significant data, two significant data. One Astro Science pack. Two Astro Science packs. This one seems way better. Uh, it uses beryllium plate, which, yeah, we didn't have this, um, a while ago. So, 
two catalog products two astro products one astro two insight two catalog one insight one cat this is so much better same fluid yeah you get a lot for your beryllium plate uh, when you do this recipe okay and astro 2 we need aeroframe poles Stacks to 200. So we'll request just a little bit more than one train load. Beryllium plate requester. Beryllium plate. And I'll just confirm the rate is quite slow. 6.67 per second. So this these inserters will be fine. Uh, as for the poles, same number. Aeroframe pole, was it? Yes. And then request some of those. Stacks to 50. So we're going to ask for 9,000. A little bit more than one train load. And switch that on. Uh, fluid is going to be the same. Catalogs are going to be different. And that's basically it. Biological catalog becomes astrometric catalog. Broad becomes broad. Simple as that. Okay. At the log. Catalog nine thousand. Switch this on and ev oh, I see a mistake. Uh, let's move our spiders little bit. Also, did we get life support? We did not get life support because we turned off our personal logistics. Where is our... there it is. Life support's on the way. Fantastic. Okay. So we need to move our scaffolding spiders as well. Back to the mall, I think. And this goes here, goes there, that goes there. And I think that's everything. Cool. What have we got here? fluid. It's going to be a little while before we get our Astro 2, but we need to change these uh, settings as well. Astro 1, Astro 2, and change the name of the station. Astro 2. And 
fantastic. Okay. And I think everything else is going to be the same, isn't it? Junk data card and 25 degree thermo fluid pickup over here. And blank data card pickup here. Nice. Okay, so it might be a little while before we actually get uh, all those catalogs. Uh, I think we need to fix our combinator here. And same thing applies on this side. We should have at least 8,000 here. Since we get a train load of 8,000 for each of the input uh, input items. I might actually bump up the provide stack threshold just a little bit on these. Because I've seen trains come to pick up 8,000 and have literally like four items missing when they come to pick up from these, uh, just because of the way it's distributed. So we'll pop that over. Not that it makes much of a difference with Bio 1. Um, how about this one? 70, is that? And this one it's easy to make broad apparently. Okay. And then energy. So that just leaves, means there'll be a little bit extra to make sure when the train asks for 8,000 it can get it, it can get 8,000 put in evenly. Fantastic. Now why is science so slow right now? Bio 2. Bio 2 is lacking bio 1. Y1 is lacking significant. Insight, broad. Uh, what's the deal with broad? We've got not quite enough to trigger a delivery. We're missing biochemical resistance data. Biomechanical resistance data. Is this it? Biochemical resistance data. Uh, it's stuck on contaminated cosmic water output. Did we mess up with the train stop? It doesn't look like it. Did we run out of places to drop off contaminated cosmic water? What? Contaminated cosmic water, 120k, and this is empty. Okay. Request threshold 1k. This is connected. Was it contaminated cosmic water? Contaminated cosmic water. We've got 200,000 here. Provide threshold 100k. Wire is connected. Um, did we somehow get all of our fluid wagons stuck forever? I actually can't find any fluid wagons right now. 
which is really, really weird. Um, okay, what's going on here? That accounts for four of them, which might be all of them, actually. What are you trying to do? You're trying to drop off heavy oil. Um... Except... I guess this needs to be greater than zero versus less than zero. That might be it. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I thought I remembered seeing a signal with the LTN train stop uh, output that wouldn't have made me expect it to work that way. But I guess it's a positive number if a train is picking up, and a negative if it's trying to drop... negative one if it's trying to drop off everything. Is this train also... Going to the same stop? Yes. Okay. Why have store and heavy oil on conditions? Um, because it's a coal liquefaction uh, station, and also because heavy oil is a byproduct of dealing with scrap. Uh, we sometimes need to drop off heavy oil here. Um, so I wanted it, preferably, I wanted it to be one station to both pick up and drop off heavy oil. And I think we've got that working properly now. So this one is dropping off. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, even so, we should have some more fluid wagons. Um, I'm just gonna request some. Say, 16 and 8. Bring to me the fluid wagons, please. Fantastic. Uh, let's go down to this block here and we'll place them. The train have rock icon because the train stopped named like that. Uh, yes. I didn't... I, I noticed that sort of half consciously, but I didn't actually notice where... Oh, it must have been this station right here. Uh, so this is stone and heavy oil, high priority pickup. Uh, the purple chest means treat it like an active pri uh, active provider chest. We need to keep this empty, otherwise the whole thing will stop. All right, so let's get our. Locomotive or fluid wagons and I feel like I should have a different color for the fluid wagons actually. It's a bit late now but it might make them a little easier to tell apart. How about blue? And we'll just send you to uh, the depot. Okay, we're gonna blueprint that. Uh, trains. 
entities so that it snaps to where we want it. Fantastic. Why are you leaving? Wait, what? Where are you going? You were already at... Oh. Well, no wonder nobody's using this depot. Um, let's copy the station name from that one. Station names... Blado. This is not the name this station should have. And this is trash pickup. Wonder if a station not named trash pickup somewhere. I, I seriously doubt it, but that is one theory. As to how those trains got so confused earlier. Why are we... Did I not ask for enough locomotives? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I thought I did pick up eight locomotives. Uh, let's go get some more then. I never see... Often this mod for trains, I use vanilla train network that I modified myself. I look at Colonel Will sometimes, but I don't understand all his train network. Um, I had one friend who did something with... How do we still not have whole man cable here? Every time I look. Even though I've seen uh, accumulators getting built. Um, yeah, I had a friend who apparently made something like LTN with vanilla circuits and stuff. Um, that That is way beyond my comprehension. What is happening here? Um, how did this happen, though? 7.2k iridium plate, stack size 40. 6,400 is a train load. Um, 48 times 4 is uh, 192 stacks times 40. 7,680. This definitely shouldn't have happened. Oh, I think I see the problem though, actually. These wires aren't connected. So the balanced unloader here didn't do its job. So now we've got 1.5k here, 1.5k here, full chest here, full chest here. Um, I think I should probably go there, actually. I'll use even distribution to rebalance those four. There we go. That should prevent that from being a problem again. What's the rate that we need boxes here? 10.8 per second, that seems fine. Although maybe we could benefit from stack inserters? No, it is backing up. Just takes a little while. Alright, so... Biocides. Contaminated cosmic water. Still not being picked up. 
Uh, we got our fluid wagons. That does make them a lot easier to spot, actually. I'm definitely sticking with that. Okay, this one's been sitting in the depot for some time. Which you would think would mean that they don't have anything to do. But we've got contaminated cosmic water, 200,000. Provide threshold, 100k. Combinator is switched on. Wires are connected. And up here we've got zero contaminated cosmic water. Requesting 120k. Um, yeah, I don't understand. we make this a higher priority? Don't... The other one's already high priority. I don't think it, it's going to matter. Maybe LTN just needs a minute. Now that we've got the trains available. Okay. What should we do next? Place some more signals and drop our UPS. Oof. Back to the mall with you. Uh, so, in theory, we've finished um, Tier 2 Astro Science. And that is our last Tier 2 Science that we needed to finish. What's this? Catalogs. Catalogs 1 and 2. Have you got Rayguard's LTN manager installed? I found it's amazing to work out what LTN is broadcasting for stations slash trains. Uh, does, I tried a mod called LTN manager. Is that the same one? Um, I think it caused a crash or something. I, I can't remember why, but I had to stop using it pretty much straight away. Should be. Shame. Yeah, it really is a shame. Lonzo de Lorena. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. He updates regularly. I actually haven't updated my game in a bit because I've been procrastinating backing it up. Because if something breaks, uh, if I update, uh, this is a very, very big save that we could lose. I really don't understand why this request isn't going through. It is connected to the station input, right? Yeah. Player data, blueprints, mods, save, equals sorted. Indeed. Um, I'm just going to try something I rarely do. Oh, why is that connected to the constant combinator as well? You're kidding. Okay, so if I had deconstructed this and put it back, it would have removed these wires. And then I would have put them back and not understood why this didn't work. But we were actually putting double all of these signals... Uh, into the logistic train stop input because this had both a red and a green wire connecting it. I don't know how I ever would have done that even by accident. 
especially without noticing. But look how quickly uh, LTN decided to send a train. Fantastic. Not sure if you are running the standalone Factorio client now. I've moved over to using the standalone client in portable mode. In separate folders for each collection of mods I'm using. So nice to switch between as well. Uh, yeah, I've got... Um, I've got the version of Factorio you get from the website. Um, not through Steam. So I can have multiple different version copies of that if I want to. Fantastic. Okay. So that'll get bioscience flowing again. Yeah, uh, we only need like 110 Bioscience 2s to get character health, that's not very exciting. Another 100 to get Catalog 3. Uh, character crafting speed, don't care. I'm much more interested now in Astro stuff. Aeroframe Scaffold and another LDS recipe. That might be interesting. I'm guessing we could make the aeroframe scaffold on the ground to get productivity bonuses. And this is going to give us an incentive to make a new LDS block as well. Um, I think last time we needed more LDS I just copy pasted the one that I had, even though it uses old beacons. So that's something. Oh, did we get this finished? We're missing a radar, I don't care. Uh, products finished. 1595. I suspect this block is working based on that. 142. So all of the furnace rows, except this one's done hardly any. Products finished zero. I wonder if there's anything wrong with this? Probably the fact that it doesn't have water might have something to do with it. Which means uh, down here we've got the same mistake. Products well, finished zero. Well, it's not that severe since we've always bottlenecked on uh, input resources. For Holmian. But even so. Let's update our constructron requests. If there's one thing I wish I could do with um, uh, the auto trash mod, and please let me know if I can and I've overlooked it. Uh, it's having having like a constructotron loadout saved and then being able to just edit that and have it instantly update all of the constructotrons um, or all, all of the spidertrons that have the constructotron settings. That would be very useful. I'm going to make a few more fluid wagons, um, just to be sure. It should be way more than we need for a long time. Okay, trains, entities... 
One, two, three, four. And let's remove the requests for wagons. And get you guys to go to depot. Fantastic. It's always something odd and strangely simple. Yeah, I mean, a complex system, for the most part, is made up of lots of simple things. Hey, Volmeme Cable, we get to see it this time. Uh, and it just takes, well, most systems, or at least, like, technical human-made systems, uh, it often just takes one little thing, one little simple connection that's broken. Uh, for the whole thing to fail. Of course, we can make things a bit more robust than that. But certainly most of what we do in Factorio is going to work that way. Um, okay. It's a little bit anticlimactic. We've finished... We finally got, um, Tier 2 of every type of science in the rail network, but we're obviously not getting those. Uh, it, it's very it's very weird to me that we're getting lots and lots of broad astronomic catalogs, but not, uh, not the regular kind. Um, but yeah. So why aren't we still getting UV. It was pretty much just UV that was the problem, right? Did we just happen to... I don't think we just happened to run out of UV first. Oh, that's right. I forgot we ran out of light oil. That is pretty severe. I think it's time to... Uh, make some... Make some blocks to make, uh... I'm just... Uh, uh, we're gonna use barrels sent up from Nalvis. If we are using barrels, uh, we could use cannons. But I don't think we want to. It's really easy to use cargo rockets now. And it's probably more efficient. Four minutes, ten seconds to spaceships, indeed. What does it take to get spaceship? Ship. Spaceship. Uh, Astro Science Pack 3, and nothing else. I think... I, I think I know which, um... Which science pack we're working on next. Unless there's something particularly tantalizing under one of the other Tier 3 science packs. Uh... I, I think I know what we're doing next. But first, unfortunately, we need to get our house in order. Um, so I think we'll probably use another one of these blocks, although I need to make an updated version of this. Um, I need to update this the same way I updated, uh, updated it on Nalvis, although this one we decided to change ever so slightly. Um, but we're putting the cargo landing pads in the middle of the block, because what is... what? Ha 
cow. Um, because we're s uh, we underestimated just how far the crashed rockets can land, well, can crash, uh, how far away from the cargo landing pad. So the first version of this we made, um, we've had crashes that are, or at least a little bit of it, is ever so slightly out of range of the roboports to repair and pick up. Uh, so we made another version of this block with the cargo landing pads in the middle. I dread the process of trying to patch it uh, with our existing blocks. I think we'd just have to change the name of this so that rockets don't resupply it anymore. And either let it run out or, I mean, it's four different resources in one block, so you probably have to temporarily make another block for that resource. Which, by the time you've done that, you may as well just abandon this one. Unless you're particularly attached to the positioning of these things, which I don't think matters that much. And even if it does, you can always just make another one. Um, but yeah, we need to make uh, some cargo landing pads for uh, fluid barrels, I think. Unless we want to do it via delivery cannon. If we do it by delivery cannon, the whole block is literally just going to be pickup stations with fluid in them. Which might be fine, actually. We lose out on having to craft the delivery cannon capsules um, and pay one heat shielding, one LDS, five explosives, ten copper cable, or maybe five iridium plate, five explosives. Uh, it remains to be seen how much better our Iridium situation is uh, since we secured that other planet. It seems to me that it's not that much better. Uh, why? This one does not have the same problem as that other station that we found. I don't know why this one is... stuck. But we'll just get it to only bring one train load of explosives. So I thought our Iridium situation was a bit better, but it turns out the... Um, the girders haven't been in motion for a while. And that's actually kind of bad, because... What was our new planet called? Not Tolibai. Uh, Via Terra. We're trying to clear out the biters on Via Terra with... Uh, with the pile drivers. And the longer... The longer it takes, the more they're going to expand, and the more it's going to take. And so on. Um, they're pretty sparse for the moment, but if we leave it long enough, they're going to be everywhere, and it's going to eat up some more of our UPS. I am loving the rate that we're getting Holmium now, though. That's fantastic. Um, maybe we should make another nuclear plant, just so we bottleneck on power less. I forgot also to place our, uh, umbrella. 
glad we remembered that before the CME came. Uh, I think we've got enough power production. At least during the day we can easily just keep this going at full speed 24-7. That's fantastic. Okay. What was I talking about? Or what was I planning to do? That's right, I was trying to figure out if we want to send barrels up via cannon. Um, and I'm thinking probably. The only problem with that is uh, I need to make another block on Nalvis. Uh, or at least configure an existing one. No, with the way I set it up, I definitely have to make another block. It's about time I did that anyway. Oh, we also need a transmitter and receiver if I do that, but that's no big deal, I guess. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure it's more efficient at this point to use cargo rockets. Um, so why don't we start by... Uh, let me see if I can find the blueprint. Space exploration, that's not it. Uh, here it is. We need to put in space rail, but I think everything else is... We also need to do space belts. But the belts here are not particularly complicated. Um, yeah, we're just gonna run that down here. That fits well. Actually, I might bring it across first. Use some undergrounds to tidy it up a bit. And then... goes here. Can we make that line up? Good enough. And then this one. That doesn't look great. That's fine. That's going to look pretty good on the map as well. What the heck are these signals? Uh, that's right, we need... We need a uh, space rail added. Actually, is that... Yeah, that's fine. Uh, the signal isn't in the usual spot. I'm a little bit confused by this. Why? Oh, we don't have the space rail here yet. Let's bring our spiders. I was going to say, why can't I point at the logistic train stop and see where the cargo wagons line up? Okay, so for the rest of these, I'm thinking actually we can just have the rail like this. And we don't need this part.
swing. This one goes up here. Did I connect this properly? Yeah, it looks good. And we don't need that signal. Thank you for the follow, Damien Tia. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we don't need that. And we don't need that. And now we can see our rail blocks a bit more clearly. That's looking pretty good to me. We already have the request set up for bots. Yes, fantastic. So now we just need to... Oh. I almost forgot the... Trash output. But we'll do that last. I think if we just copy this like this now... Looks kind of like a computer chip or something. Very nice. Let's get our spiders to drop this stuff off. Scaffolding spiders over here, please. And last but not least, we need to have our blacklist uh, so everything that isn't the desired product comes down here into the trash that'll get sent back to the mall which can get put back into the rail network if there's enough of a certain resource that reminds me um, I wanted to check oh Oh no. Um Yeah, I think oh no. I think it was a mistake having more than one. Um unless we can figure out a way to have these stations only provide one like only one of these could provide iron, only one of these could provide uranium at a time. Oh no, indeed. Um, so my thinking here was, let's do the simplest possible never break um, load from logistic network to LTN train possible. And the way we do that is... Um, Output the logistic network contents to the logistic train stop input, and then we take the logistic train stop output, set requests, uh, set filters blacklist for this thing that's going to empty the chest later, and here we've just got fast inserters with a stack size of 1. So no particularly fancy circuitry for the loader, we just keep inserting one at a time, so we never have the inserter sticking out at the end. Uh, this solves the problem of not knowing when the uh, chests will be completely loaded. Or if you want to put it another way, uh, a more complicated way of doing it, we could try taking stuff from the requester chests and then putting it in a regular chest so that we can both set requests and read. And then once you read that there's uh, that those chests are completely full, then you start loading the train. But you have to have some kind of latch system whereby you don't just revert back to not loading the train because the chests are not full and so on. Um, 
But yeah, because this is so slow, and I really do mean so slow, uh, with a stack size of 50, it takes four, uh, 2,000 swings of the inserter, which is like 2.4 per second, um, uh, 833 seconds, almost 14 minutes to load the train. So, clever as I am, I thought, well, what if we simply have more stations? Um, it turns out it didn't work that way. Um, to unload our excess resources here. So, let's send these guys back to the depots. And they are going to have their have their cargo wagons emptied. And we're also going to remove these extra three stations. And we're just going to, uh, I think for now at least, unless we go back here and make a faster, precise loader, we're just going to accept that it's going to take some time to load the train. Um, it shouldn't be, it should be the, ex the exception rather than the rule that we've got excess resources here queued up to be destroyed, but then we don't get quite enough of it. Uh, we, we get it requested somewhere else, even though this is a station of last resort. Um... I just wanted it to be possible for trains to take from this storage, if it's needed, um, before the items are actually destroyed. But yeah, that obviously got a bit messed up. And we've had... oh, I was going to say we've had new uranium here for a while because they were stuck, but apparently because I had a higher train limit, um, that wasn't quite so bad. Does this train have anything other than uranium in it? Yes, but we'll just have it unload the uranium, and because we've got filter inserters everywhere, that's not going to be a problem. It's just going to go back to the depot with a little bit of coal. The Uranium-235 is flowing very well now. Fantastic. Um, I think I would like to be able to store more Uranium here, though. Although, apparently, uh, it's all getting taken anyway. Oh, that's right, we have uranium storage right here. Um, 686,000 uranium-238 and uh, 65k-235. That's pretty good. Except I think I am slightly regretting my decision to not have a uranium-238 drop off here. Um, we could put it here. The only question now, if we do this, is how do we make it so that we keep the storage of 238 and 235 in the rail network, uh, about equal. So we can obviously uh, send a signal for how much we've got of each over these Ys. And I guess we can just 
instead of messing around with LTN trying to figure out settings to make it not deliver from here to here under certain conditions. Well, we can do that too. Whether we do it by not setting the request or if we do it by stopping a belt. Um, we just need to get these two signals and say 238 greater than 235 allow 238 to be inserted here. Yeah, that seems relatively easy to do, actually. Uh, let's grab our construction spiders and bring them over this way. I'll add some stack filter inserters and some chests. Um, half a belt is where it's going to bottleneck anyway, which is fine. So we're going to do a slow unloader. That's space belt. Uh, slow unloader. Maybe here. That's a bit much, actually. We just need to add a splitter here. Could maybe make that one red. Actually, I don't think our construction spiders carry red belt. Um, so we'll just make that blue, f I suppose. Oh, and also we need to put a filter on this first. Um, we're going to connect this to here, actually. I think we can do it like so. Fantastic. Um, B38. Sixteen K. Uh, slightly more than that, so it never runs out. And I think we will put the condition on a bit of belt here. Um, so it's going to connect like so. Is this actually... We could probably stand to put pylons here. Let's get our construction spiders to go down this way for a moment. Until those pylons are all placed. There's a substation in the way. Actually, well, let's do this anyway. Oops. Not that I want you to go, but isn't it much later than normal streaming for you? Uh, we are eight minutes over with my current schedule, yes. Um, so we'll maybe wrap this build up. The only trouble with the pylons is... Well, okay, we've got these two here, so never mind. I was going to say, making the circuit wire reach... Um, so we'll connect that there. Is it going to be a problem if we connect? I think it is. 
We'll need to change this to be specific. And we'll need to change this to be specific as well. Well, this one, this one doesn't need to change. This one does. And I think that's all. So I'll make this one specific. That one doesn't need to change. That is 235. So now we can connect these two wires without any issue, I'm pretty sure. So on the green wire, we know how much we've got of each resource. And we're just going to say 235 less than 238. DST striked again. That is the difference of normal. DST. DST. Daylight savings time. Ah. I heard something about... Oh, damn it. I heard something about maybe the US was... Well, some people hoped to... Uh, get the US to just all have the same time or something, or like no more daylight savings. I forget the details. Okay. Oh, and we're going to input priority on the right as well. And I'm just realizing we're only looking for the 238 on this belt, as opposed to all of them. This probably should have been here. I guess it's not too late to change that. Just flip this around. Um, sadly, our wire is going to be all messed up. That is a really good fit. Um, and we'll get rid of this again. I don't think we can even replace the red belt because the spiders will have it in their trash slots. Why are they not deconstructing? Oh, there we go. Yeah, they're just being slow with the uh, bot orders. Okay. Oh, we've got the setting, too. Fantastic. Now they're doing it. Yeah, there it is. Fast transport belt in the trash slots. Um, I guess we can just do this. So, we request a certain amount of 238 here, regardless, and then, also let me just get rid of the old power poles here. Uh, we request a certain amount of 238 here, regardless, and then we compare how much is in the storage. If there's less 235 than 238, we let the 238 flow through here. We also priority input from the side where we're doing um, uranium processing. And that is basically it. So all of the 238 here is now available to be coverxed. But we'll still use the uranium ore as a priority. Should we use the uranium ore as a priority? I guess ultimately it's... 
not going to matter? If anything, maybe we should be prioritizing the input from the storage. Because if that fills up, let, let's say 238 is just saturated everywhere. This is completely full. This is completely full. It backs up all the way up here. Um, we're going to have 238 here, which is fine. We've got things in place so that we don't overload these chests. We'll be converting 238 to 235. Yeah, I don't think it's actually a problem. The only thing is we'll be losing out on the minuscule amount of 235 that we make directly from uranium ore, throughput-wise, if that were to ever happen. But I don't think that's worth considering. Uh, we get 2.5, 2.5056, 2.35 per second from Coverex here, compared to 0 0.06. Um, not worth worrying about. We have that this weekend in Vic. Indeed. Uh... I actually, my last job, I had to work, uh, I was working from home, and it, it was like for a department in Victoria, actually. I kept having to remind myself and check daylight savings time, or just the difference across the states, I forget. Oh, both, actually. Daylight saving time threw me off as well. Okay, let's make sure we save. Oh, I should put um I should put a little reminder here for What fluids should we send up? Heavy, light, lubricant. I'm just going to put a barrel here. We'll decide that later. I'm just going to leave that there to maybe remind myself uh, what this is about. Or maybe... Barrel. B for barrel. That doesn't look quite right, but you get the idea. Okay, let's give it a save. I had no idea it was changing until earlier today, since I have something on Sunday morning. Yeah, it can really sneak up on you. Oh, uh, apparently we don't have logistic network reaching these chests. We'll do something about that next time. All right, let's see who is uh, streaming Factorio for today and maybe give them a raid. Oh, it's actually Tuesday already. Uh, I guess my days off have just appeared. Um, all right. Who should we raid today? Factorio is looking very quiet right now. Um, so we'll either drop in on a small streamer, unless anyone has any suggestions. First time, beginning of the robot revolution. German Crastorio. I'm guessing if you're watching uh, Space Exploration, 
Crestorio is probably going to be the, on average, the more accurate, uh, accurate, more attractive choice out of these so far. So why don't we raid? Uh, Sure, let's give it a go. Don't know this person, but we'll give him a try. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Uh, check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're interested. If you have any questions about the circuits or anything, by all means. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, for now... Let's, where is this train going, I wonder? There we go. Now let's drop in on Umaid, I guess. Take care, guys. Okay.